It is the drive Bronco fans will remember for a lifetime. Maybe he's playing the role of you trying to close this one out to the Broncos. Hangs it up for Rodney. Touchdown, Broncos! How about that? Today, though, BSU must get behind the wheel again. And remember not about what was, but what might happen again. You know, we want to win. We don't want to lose. This is a team we lost to last year, and we just want to pay them back. Payback time in Bayou country. The Broncos in Louisiana Tech coming up next, live on Channel 6. From Joe IA Stadium, located on the campus of Louisiana Tech University in Ruston, Louisiana, it's Bronco football. Today, Boise State comes to town with a record of three and one, taking on the host team Bulldogs with a mark of two and three. And how do everyone and welcome? My name is Dave Tester, set to bring you all the play-by-play -play action from Bayou Country, where the hope of the Broncos is to keep the drive alive. And joining me now, as always, my colleague Joe Hughes. And Joe, we talked about it heading into the show don't look back on the drive look back to what happened a year ago against this Louisiana Tech team these two teams played on the blue last year it was a thriller went down to the last minute Louisiana Tech scored a touchdown in the last minute of the game to win Broncos coming into Louisiana with revenge on their mind for sure now last Saturday Nate Sparks left as the quarterback of choice or is Bart Hendricks the man well Bart Hendricks will get the start today and he had a fantastic game last last week 240 yards passing the ball three touchdowns just had the one interception Bart will be the starter today but our question is will there be sparks on the field today sparks will get uh, some playing time here in the first half coach cutter wants to see both of his quarterbacks playing here in the first half and you see that was what he did in the last two minutes of again that win against Utah unbelievable when we come back we'll tell you about an unbelievable offense that Louisiana Tech possesses plus the St. Al's injury report back with more right after this It's your life. A couple of days ago, Jeff Davis thought his wrist was broken. The injury, well, we're not sure if it's broken, but it is very painful. Starting tackle number 79, Keith Dilworth injured his ankle in the Utah game. It's heavily taped, but he will start today. And defensive back Ryan Brinkley a bit slowed up by an ankle, and that's bad news because this team from Louisiana will throw the football nearly 600 yards a game. Well, it, and they have a Heisman Trophy candidate in number 13. He's just a junior, Tim Rattay, and he's thrown for over 2,000 yards already of the season. Incredible numbers, including 14 touchdowns. Tough quarterback to stop. You might think he spreads the football around the field, but there's one guy he's looking for. Yeah, and that's you're looking at him. Troy Edwards, 881 yards receiving already this year. He had 405 in the first game this year. A one-two punch. The Broncos are hoping to knock out. When we come back, the kickoff and an update on the weather. It's a little bit humid here in Louisiana. More right after this. You remember what happened a year ago, La Tech coming back to win it. But what many Broncos remember was back in 1973. That was the Pioneer Bowl, and Tony Knapp coached that team, and uh, Louisiana Tech won the game and the Division II National Championship. Joe, this stat to me, normally I don't care about what the weather looks like. It's either raining or it's nice out, but the humidity today, you can see by there, puts it well, flat out hot and wet. How's that? Yeah, it is certainly hot and wet. It's been raining here over the last 24 hours. Not raining right now. It is a, an overcast sky, and that's really the way the Broncos want it. They don't want the sun to come out, start heating things up, and watching that humidity start to skyrocket here in Bayou Country. Head coach Gary Croton in his third year. Ironically enough, he was on the track team at Idaho State when a guy named Cutter was uh, playing football. And there is the guy named Cutter, head coach Dirk Cutter in his first season, has the Broncos off to their best start since the team made a run at the national championship a few years back. Louisiana Tech, though, on the other hand, they're off to their worst start in four years. Right, uh, they're one and four, actually two and three because of a forfeit against uh, Texas A&M, a game they actually lost 28-7, to but there was the forfeit. 
Louisiana Tech wins the toss and they will take the football as Todd Boom Boom Bell Castro hangs it up in the corner and that's where Louisiana Tech will take over the football first and ten. Let's take a look at the quarterback and find out what he is all about. Tim Rote, 6'1", 200 pounds, a junior. Joe Hughes talked about his numbers last week, 352 yards, two interceptions, which is rare for Tim Rote as he brings the team out. First play, first and ten, and we expect to see more formations, more receivers than you have seen all season. In fact, the Bronco defensive staff, the most difficult scheme they have seen and complete right out of the gate. James Jordan picks up big yards yards and then he lets the football go to John Simon and it moves it all the way up to the 46 yard line. Today's starting lineups are brought to you by Commercial Tire. Commercial Tire driven to be the best. The O-line averages 292 pounds. They don't give up many sacks. The backs and receivers, we may see five receivers at any one time. So another first down for Tech as they get ready to roll. Rate back in the pocket going deep to the fastest man on the football field, Troy Edwards. And right away, they get out to a start that the Bronco defense didn't want to see happen. The D-line led by Setzer and Reidman. They are the heart and soul. Brian Johnson, the leading tackler, scored a touchdown against Tack last year in the secondary. They will indeed be challenged. In fact, they are already as the ball is on the 12-yard line of Boise State. Just two plays, Joe, and Tech's knocking on the door as Edwards drops the football. Well, we'll be seeing uh, number 13 looking the way of number 16 often today, and uh, already a big play for big yardage. This team can score quick, often, and, and, and fast throughout this game. So as the big man, Tim Rote, gets the signals from the sidelines to set up this offense, we can tell you that uh, we're just past 3 o'clock here in Louisiana. We're in the northern part of the state. Joe, it's about five hours to New Orleans. We didn't have time to make the trip, but that gives you some idea of our location. It's complete to the tailback, John Simon, and Simon goes up and over to the four-yard line before he's finally brought down by Dempsey Deeds. One of many targets for, for Tim Rattay. Simon is a redshirt freshman, number eight, coming out of the backfield. Just underneath the line of scrimmage, makes the catch, and he's going to get down close towards the end zone, inside the five-yard line for Simon. If you've just joined us, Louisiana Tech won the toss, and they have marched it down almost the length of the football field as uh, the Bronx is electing to boot it shallow, giving Tech the ball at the 28, and now they have a third down and a yard to go. And that's the tailback, Bobby Raytel. And they say a touchdown, a late call by the official touchdown. Well, the worst nightmare has come true for the Broncos. Bobby Raytel scored a couple of touchdowns last year against the Broncos. This one is longer than any of the ones. The ones he had last year were just from two yards out. This one right along the five-yard line. You see the hole opening up. And let's see if he gets the ball across uh, the goal line. He does right there, maybe a little bit after he was down, but he was so close they gave it the touchdown. So Trent Wyrick will try the point after in the early moments of this game. And the kick is good, taking about a minute and a half. And just like that, the home team leading the Broncos 7-0. Louisiana Tech has... Louisiana Tech has... Doesn't take this team long to score. Uh, just a little over a minute, they march it 70-plus yards to lead it. Seven to nothing. Shenard Hartz is the deep man. He'll take the football at the four-yard line, trying to give the Broncos some good position. And if Shenard gets loose, look out. He's got the good speed. And Hartz gets it up to the 28-yard line, where it will be first down and 10 for the Broncos. And again, uh, Bart Hendricks will be the man. Of course, last week, a lot of people said, hey, Nate Sparks did the duty. Well, he certainly did with the drive, but listen to these numbers. Bart Hendricks, 17 of 35, 240 yards and three touchdowns in the win against Utah. Those are his numbers on the season. A very nice interception to touchdown ratio. Bart with eight TDs, four interceptions. So BSU on its first possession, trailing in this football game, seven to nothing. Man 
in motion is Jim Brecky. They keep it on the ground to Hurley. And Hurley has nowhere to go as that D line makes a stand. Let's take a look now at the Bronco offensive line. Jermaine Bellin, he is a four year starter. All Big West tackle anchors the O line, which averages 309 pounds, 35 pound advantage over the LA Tech defense. Aaron Hurley's the tailback. Rodney Smith, by the way, Big West player of the week after the catch of a week ago. Well, Hurley lost about a yard, so it'll bring up second and 11. And we have a timeout on the field as the officials make some adjustments. I think what they're telling is Rodney Smith's equipment. You must have your knee pads over your knees. And this has happened to Rodney before. It's a charge timeout against Boise State. And we will take a timeout as Rodney figures out got to have those knee pads on. We'll be back in a flash. Joe, it may not seem like much now, but Rodney Smith's knee pads cost BSU a timeout. Right. He's had uh, the same situation in the first game of the season. BSU only got a warning for not having uh, the knee pads in at home, but on the road, they're charged for a timeout. So the Broncos lose no yards, but a valuable timeout on second down and 11. Rodney is back in the lineup. Bart Hendricks goes right to Rodney, who makes the grab, trying to make amends. He's just a couple of yards shy of the first down. Let's look at the Louisiana Tech defensive line. Uh, nose guard Otis Pitt, 6'1", 285 pounds. He's the strongest man on the team. That linebacking crew led by Quincy Stewart, leading tackler on the team, the secondary, Roderick Pernetter. He's young, but very talented. So the Broncos faced with a third and one. Aaron Hurley's the single setback. Brad Arbin, who kind of touched down last week, is the fullback. Look for Arbin to lead the way through the hole. Option, and Hendricks has the first down, and Coach Cutter told us, Joe, he loves the option on third and short. Right, he was, last week against Utah, the Broncos were very successful getting first downs off of the option, specifically with uh, Bart Hendricks at the quarterback. You might be thinking that uh, it would be Nate Sparks would be the more proficient runner, but look at that wide open hole for Bart to run through. No problem getting three or four yards for a first down there. Joe, who would forget that run of a year ago that Mr. Hendricks had against this team? Right, freshman year. 73 yards for a touchdown. Hendricks, little play action's got Rodney open, it, and Smith is brought down. A nice defensive play by Louisiana Tech as Rodney gets two catches in a row. The Big West Player of the Week doing his thing. Right now, Rodney Smith's getting uh, just man-on-man -on -man coverage. They're giving him plenty of room, looking for him maybe to, to go the deep route. You saw a four or five yard cushion at least, so Rodney just pulls up short, gets a good gain, about six yards. So they mark the ball at the midfield stripe. Playing on Bermuda grass. It rained all morning, but it is not very slick out there. But it is very humid. Hendricks is gonna go down. Well, Steve Walker comes in and makes the play. Joe, isn't Steve Walker from your neck of the woods? Right, yeah. In fact, when we got here, we, we saw a car in the parking lot with 1G plates from Idaho. And uh, Mr. Walker, Steve Walker coming in, putting some pressure on. And you see Hendricks go down. There was at least three guys that made it through, putting the pressure. You see Stewart there as well. And uh, Idaho kid taking it against the Boise products. So instead of a second and short, it's now third and long after Hendricks takes the sack. Bart on the rollout, wants to go deep. He's got Corey making the catch. So Corey Nelson goes up and brings the football down. And he will pick up 15 yards for a first down at the 40. Corey Nelson on the right side of your screen runs a nice little out pattern and they have to respect his speed because he's a trackster and he can burn it downfield. Everyone's talking about the Louisiana Tech passing attack, but so far Bart Hendricks and the gang are looking pretty proficient for the Broncos. Corey's long on the season as you see his numbers. An 80 yarder and wasn't it exciting just before the half on the blue. 
Hurley takes the football, bobs and weaves, and maybe gets a couple of yards. This Bronco coaching staff wants to run the football, something they didn't do last week. They really want to have that balanced attack and, and, have, and help establish longer drives. Keeping it on the ground helps the clock rolling, keeps Louisiana Tech's offense off of the field, and by handing the ball off to Hurley and Shenard Hartz, keeps that clock moving, keeps the drive going. We're at the 10-minute mark of the first period. Louisiana Tech leading it 7 to nothing. Dave Tester here along with Joe Hughes. Hoping you're enjoying our Bronco Sports exclusive on Channel 6. BSU trying to win two in a row on the road. Again, Hurley carries the football. And he stopped after picking up maybe a yard and a half. This offensive line for the Broncos is the largest offensive line Louisiana Tech has seen all season, even though they've seen some awfully good offensive lines playing the likes of Nebraska and, and the Texas A&M, but the Broncos are by far the biggest they've seen. Jermaine Bellin goes 325 pounds. Ryan Gronum, 300 pounds. Jeremy Mankins, 320 pounds. Keith Dilworth, 317 pounds. They're big, and they're very active up there. Corey Nelson coming to the bottom of your screen. This is a new setup for the Broncos. And it is an incomplete pass. Maybe you can explain, Joe, here's about the two tailbacks, what that does. Right, well, it helps. It gives uh, just a couple of more options for a passing game for the Broncos. You've got Shenard Hartz and Aaron Hurley in the backfield, along with three, three wide receivers. So actually five options. If you count the tight end, you've got six options to throw as well for the Broncos. That one not successful, and we got fourth down coming up. So decision time for Coach Cutter. He says, let's send Gonzo out on the field. And, oh, he had a magnificent game last week, and that was a big question mark. We told you about Jeff Davis uh, has an injured wrist. Don't know if it's fractured or not, but uh, a great time for Gonzalez to really step up his game, averaging 36 yards of boot, and he looks for the corner, and this one's just going to fly into the end zone where it'll be a touchdown, touchback rather, and Louisiana Tech will have the football. So not the situation the Broncos were hoping for. A, Louisiana Tech marching it down the length of the field. B, the Broncos having little success. Right. Well, the Broncos don't really need to panic uh, just yet. It's still early on in the game. The last drive Louisiana Tech uh, was able to get was due mainly to one big play, and that's what the Broncos need to stop. They need to stop the big play. Edwards is going to get his yardage, but to try to keep it uh, from like an 80, 60-yard game. Rote with the quick out hits James Jordan. Nice defensive play by BSU, and they've been gearing up for that all week. In particular, Ross Ferris, who is the fastest man on the Bronco football team, he's got to come up and make the play like he did on Mr. Jordan. James Jordan, a redshirt freshman, he's one of the biggest receivers they have, standing around six foot three, and uh, someone they look to uh, outside of Edwards. Louisiana Tech trying to get the Bronco defense out of tempo, running without a huddle right now. Bobby Raytel jumping over defenders, and he'll pick up about three yards. John Reidman hustling over uh, along with Brian Johnson to make the stop. Explain what that does to the Bronco defense that's looking for personnel. Well, let's take a look at, uh, at, the, sec at the replay of this, and Bobby Raytel, he was the man... Uh, running the ball last week or last year against the Broncos and he's seen his share of action so far here in the first quarter. So Louisiana Tech is faced with a third and seven. Talking a little bit about the no huddle. Rete looks over the offense, fires it complete, and that's James Jordan, and Jordan gets the big gainer across the middle where Jeff Davis makes the stop. Jordan, like we were just mentioning, is a big target. Redshirt freshman got to study the system last year. It's a complicated system, as, uh, as you see all the different formations. Right up the middle, Jordan uh, finds the seam and the zone coverage of the Broncos, and we still have that no-huddle offense. Even on the receivers. That's two to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. A lot of guys out there to cover, and uh, quarterback Tim Rote says, too many guys, even for his offense. We'll be back to Louisiana right after this.
Louisiana Tech with the football and that completion just going over the 100 yard mark already Joe in total offense. Boy it, they strike quickly and fast and James Jordan being the featured wide receiver this time the red shirt freshman we've been highlighting the big target again finding the gap in the zone. Three receivers to the bottom of the screen one to the top and they throw it to the tailback Bobby Raytel. All these formations and Coach Grout told us, uh, he said, you know what, the reason I do this is because all my teams, I haven't had very good teams, I've always been undermatched, I had to dream up some kind of invention. So many targets uh, for someone with the likes of Rate, who is a very accurate passer. This is almost a, a ball control throwing offense, just little dinks here and there, and then once in a while, the big play. Five receivers in this package. You see the trip formation to the bottom, two to the top, and they fire it to the speedster, and Troy Edwards may be gone to the races. 4-4 four, four speed, you can't stop number 16 when he gets even a tiny opening. That time they threw just underneath the coverage, and the, he's probably their best running back if he so, so chose to, to play that position. But number 16, he's going to get open just underneath the coverage, does a little swim move past Brian Johnson, and then look at him go. He has the moves. Then he puts on the afterburners to get to the corner of the end zone. Here we see it again. Right across the middle, Edwards, the main man when it comes to Louisiana Tech, and the speed gets him there. Trying to make it 14 to nothing. And just like that, the table turned of a week ago where the Broncos jumped out to the 14-0 lead against Utah. Now on the road in Louisiana, they find themselves trailing 14 to nothing. Sometime during this game, we'll announce the Master Rooter fan of the game. We're looking for that dedicated Bronco fan. We want to thank the nice folks at Master Rooter, master of the trade for picking our Master Rooter fan of the game. Well, so far, Dave, no real surprises from Louisiana Tech. They're going to throw the ball. They'll throw it often. A little quick passes all around. And uh, so far, BSU has not figured out how to stop the offense. Well, the big play, the toss to Troy Edwards, but it goes six for 80 yards. This one was, what, 34 seconds longer than the first scoring drive? Right, and they have four touchdown drives this year that are under one minute. So they know how to get the big plays fast. And it doesn't, doesn't hurt them that they're running that uh, no huddle offense. It's, it's easy to score quickly when you're not taking the time in the huddle. And what about in this humidity? That must make the defensive line just fatigued. Well, yeah, and the Broncos are trying to sub, sub in as many players as they can to keep everybody fresh. But when they have that no huddle, there's no time to substitute any of the players in. So they're out there for the duration of the drive until the, until the, the clock clock has stopped. So Tech will kick it off after the touchdown leading 14 to nothing. Shenard Hartz is the deep man. He'll take it at the 12 yard line. BSU looking for some sort of a break and Shenard's running the wrong direction. There was a sea of blue and not the color of blue he's used to seeing. All right, Shenard trying to read his block, kept looking for an opening, kept moving off to his right, looking for that opening and wasn't able to find it. A sea of blue here in Louisiana and the Broncos are deep in their own part of the football field. Of course, the Broncos using this game as not a warm up because it's plenty toasty down here, but uh, next week they begin Big West play and conference you can't stub your toe or you're in big trouble as they get set to take on North Texas on the blue turf. So the Broncos with the football on their own 13 yard line Hendricks throwing it up to Ron Pound and the young man from Weezer's got a lot of running room as he pushes it all the way to the 42 yard line. Ron Pound wide open on that play. No one everyone forgot about uh, the Weezer kid. We'll take another peek at it. Keep your eye on number 44. He starts from a tight end position on the right side of the screen and look at nobody is around him. You have one receiver cutting in. You have Pound running out and Brad Arbin trying to get down and make a block to help out. Uh, but still, a fantastic gain for Ron Pound, the Weezer kid. Yeah, whenever you say Weezer, you think of Joe Malay, and I asked Pounder, I said, you know Joe Malay? He goes, Dave, everybody knows Joe Malay <laughs> as Aaron Hurley keeps it on the ground, and Hurley turns the corner, picks up about four yards. 
So really mixing it up. Ron Pound didn't catch a single ball last week, and now he makes a big game for the Broncos. Right, and not a bad play here by the Broncos. Just keeping keeping the Louisiana Tech defense honest, keeping the ball on the ground, making sure that they, they have to play the defense. And Bart Hendricks has been perfect so far this game. You saw the stats. He has not missed a pass. Will Coach Cutter stick with his script being uh, almost perfect and going with Nate Sparks before the half is over? Boy, it's, it's tough to pull out the hot guy. Hendricks, under pressure, may just tuck it and run. And he knows all too well how to run it against Tech. But I'll bet you the defensive crew from Tech showed that play a couple of times. Well, I think they may have looked at that uh, once or twice from last year. Starting as a freshman, his first game, Nate Sparks was injured and... Bart Hendricks sprung a 73-yard run on the blue at Bronco Stadium. They know, talking to the defensive coordinator, he says, hey, I know both, both quarterbacks for BSU can run. I saw what that Hendricks kid did to us last year. Brings up a third and four. Broncos need to get it to the 48 of Tech. They may have taken too much time as I heard the official blow the whistle. And now instead of a third and four, it may be a third and nine. That is the scenario. Boy, that certainly changes your play calling ability when you're looking at we just need four yards. Now we need ten. Right. Well, even third and four, you might have seen Bart try that little speed option play that Cutter likes to run when it's third and short. Well, take that out of the mix now that it's third and long. Coach Cutter standing right next to Nate Sparks. Nate's probably a little more attentive this game <laughs> after last week. He said, boy, I, I didn't know. Didn't know quite what to do. Hendricks back to pass. He's got Rodney makes the catch. And I believe he's got enough for the first down. Let's see where the official spots that football. Initially had enough for the first down curled back a little but I think Joey's right at the 48. Boy it's it's going to be awfully close and from where he caught it he had it easily by two yards. Take, Rodney is over on uh, the side left side of your screen right where he caught it he was two yards past the first down marker was coming back to get the ball and, the, and he gets the mark right. Um, boy Hendricks taking a hit as well still throwing it on target. Nice play by Hendricks but this is some of what happened to him last week. He got hit quite a bit and that's part of why Nate Sparks came in at the end of the game because Bart was uh, not only fatigued but getting hurt a little bit. Big Cedric Williams 6'3", 265 pounds. That'll make anybody tired when the big defensive end is rolling over the top of you. See how close that is. Of course, the tech crew saying now, now it's decision time. Joe, you trail 14 to nothing. Is Coach Cutter a gambler? Coach Cutter, I remember talking to him last week. He likes the aggressive play. I think this time he is on the Louisiana Tech side of the 50-yard line. I think he'll go the aggressive route. You see him taking a look at his play sheet. What do I have for fourth and inches? I think he's going to go for it. There's two plays. You've got the option and also where they try to jam the snap count. And you mm -hmm. remember Nate did that in the opening of the drive a week ago. Right, at the perfect spot on the one-yard line when you need a little breathing room. They may just go with a good hard count here, try to pull somebody off sides. Last week they took all the snaps on the count of one. Nate came in and changed that to the count of three. Let's see what the Broncos do on fourth and inches. <laughs> I think it was on three. What do you think? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it was on one. <laughs> even. Well, that is the specialty of Coach Cutter, and they practice it all week long. And Steve Walker. Uh, one minute we called his name, he did a good job, and now the former Emmett Husky is saying, I gave the team the first down. That's right. He's, he's so eager to play well in front of this Idaho crowd watching the broadcast. Uh, Steve Walker just a little bit eager to get across and uh, get some of his Idaho, uh, not teammates, but... Uh, football players and Joe we felt eager. right at home when we saw his car with the 1G <laughs> license plate here in uh, Ruston Louisiana <laughs> I tried to start it up but couldn't do it so the Broncos keep the drive alive and Aaron Hurley carries the football he'll get a couple of yards Hurley's been the workhorse so far no big gainers for the senior from Reno, but uh, he's been doing his job. But you know, by, by running the ball like that, uh, it keeps the linebackers, they have to stay fairly close to the line of scrimmage, and that's exactly why someone like Ron Pound was able to get open. He's a tight end, generally a linebacker's gonna cover a tight end, and that's why Pound was able to get out uh, earlier on this drive. Keeping them honest. 
As you get the look from the Louisiana sidelines onto the field to Bart Hendricks. Another whistle on the field and the clock goes down to zero and I think too much time against the Broncos again. I'm not sure why the Broncos are struggling with this right now, Joe. They tack on five yards. Well, once again, the play clock uh, rolled down to zero, and you got it. Well, Bart can see the clock in his end of the end zone. Yeah, they, they got it on both sides of the end zone, so Bart should be able to see that. Well, instead of a second and 10, it is second and 15. Two receivers to the top of your screen. Bart, a lot of time, fires it, and complete. And for a minute, the official thought, now, NFL, can Corey get up and run? He goes, wait a minute. Once you're down, you're down. And I'll tell you what, Corey Nelson is the speedster, and you got to be careful. Take a peek at what Bart, Bart is able to see scanning the field. He's actually looking downfield. His secondary receivers are over here to the right, and that's who he goes to in Corey Nelson. It was a bit of a dangerous pass because the, the defensive back was coming up and just missed it, but it goes for uh, at least uh, closer to where they were starting it from second down. Good look at Corey Nelson, the senior. He's hoping, we talked about last week, to run to the NCAAs at BSU next June. Right now he wants to run for the Broncos, and on third and eight, Rodney did not have a chance to get that ball, and Hendricks is kind of shaking his head. I think, though, the big part of that drive was the too much time call. Right. Uh, you, Delay you set, a game. Set you back five yards, and it's just, you know, it's tough enough getting 10 yards for, with every three downs that, or series of four downs that you have. But uh, you back yourself up like that, and that's certainly a penalty that you don't need to have called. In. Some things are going to happen. You're going to have holding once in a while, but delay a game, that's one that shouldn't happen. And how about twice on the same right. series? So Gonzalez will come out. He will boot it from his own 45. See if he can get it in the corner this time. Well, one official's marking it way up towards the Broncos, and another one is walking up. You can see him there to the. Well, they got a pretty Louisiana Tech got a pretty good spot out of. Of course, that's the danger when you boot one out of bounds like that. Don't forget coming up at the end of the game, Joe and I will uh, announce the Work Care Northwest Player of the Game. Work Care Northwest today's solution for workers' compensation risks. Pretty impressive for Mr. Rate. Eight of nine. 144 yards, throw a touchdown in there. Bobby Raytel has one rushing, and that's where we stand here with three minutes to go in the first quarter, and we see another man wide open, Paul Jenkins, and Jenkins is all the way up to the 45-yard line. The big plays are killing the Broncos. Boy, Paul Jenkins hasn't caught a lot of balls this year, only 49 yards uh, receiving total all year, and Jenkins, what he's gonna do, he's gonna pull up and then just run the fade route. And they get it to him. Broncos in zone coverage. Ross getting him out of bounds. So again, Louisiana Tech without a huddle. Firing it. And this one is batted away. Looked like Matt Hill, the Grangeville kid. Speaking of Bulldogs, oh. Matt Hill got a glove on that one. Well, we got a, had a Weezer kid, and now we've got... See, put the hand up, big old glove by number 92. That would be Matt Hill from Grangeville. The Idaho kids getting in the game. So a big play by the defensive line. Uh, Hill backs up, sets her, and already the Broncos uh, having to substitute in this heat and humidity. Pass intended for Troy Edwards, incomplete as Jeff Davis is on the cover. In fact, a couple of guys out there. I know that the defensive coordinators for the Broncos do not want to see one-on-one -on -one coverage with Edwards. and. Uh, and that time it was Davis out there. Damien Schilling was also out there as well. So double coverage on it, and then the ball was underthrown. We're at the three-minute mark. You see the conversion numbers. Bulldogs have been perfect. They've scored every time they've had the football so far in this game. A big opportunity for the Broncos to hold on third and ten. Rate with time, fires it complete. And getting away is James Jordan. The Broncos are not wrapping up when it comes to making tackles. It would not have kept them from getting the first down, but that's too many yards after the catch. Boy, James Jordan, I believe, on this play is a secondary receiver. If you take a look at it, you can almost see 
the eyes of Rattay was looking over to the to the left a little bit more where Edwards was. Checks off him because he's in double double coverage and throws it the way of Jordan. The big target again, wide open in the middle for tough for big yards. Ross Ferris has got to make that tackle. Three receivers in this formation to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. They're just going to hand it off to Simon and Simon. Gets it across to the AT. That time Ross Ferris wrapped up the runner. Right, but talk about keeping uh, the the defense honest. Here, the, here goes Louisiana Tech doing a little bit of what the Broncos do. Put in the run play. The little draw opens up along the right side. Ferris comes up and makes a tackle, but it's a gain of about seven yards. So Louisiana Tech not having any problems at this point moving the football, which is their specialty. Second down, about four yards for Tech. Blitz is on, Ross Ferris getting in the face. And that was still nearly completed as Damien Schilling was on the cover of Sean Cangelosi. Right, in fact, that was just simply a drop ball by Cangelosi. You saw Ross Ferris coming in and putting heavy pressure on Rattay, and he still got the ball exactly where he wanted. I think that's why he's not a big kid, six foot one, but I think a lot of NFL teams are looking at him because he can still put the ball on the money. Look at this formation, Dave. Yeah, it's called the diamond formation. See the four receivers to the top? I'd hate to be a defensive back seeing a diamond in the rough right now. Usually they go the other way, and that's the case as Tim Rattay just runs it. it. That's what we've seen in film, Joe, is Louisiana Tech sets that diamond package and then they either throw or run the other direction. All right, well, what they've done is they've spread the Bronco defense out all over the field. Four receivers on one side, a couple of receivers on the other side. Broncos have to get personnel out there to cover those guys, those uh, pass receivers, and then Rattay just keeps it and tucks it and runs. There it is again. This time they'll throw into the diamond. And wide open and a touchdown is Paul Jenkins. Louisiana Tech right now doing whatever they want, leading it 20 to nothing in the first quarter. Boy, Louisiana Tech's offense looking like a well-oiled machine. This is what they were touting all season long. Rattay stumbles a little bit, looks across the middle, and this is where it's been wide open in the Bronco defense, just right across the middle. Broncos playing some zone coverage, and that time Jenkins just found the hole. Rattay can spot all those receivers. He's very good at picking out who's open. The point after attempt puts Tech up by three touchdowns. The homecoming crowd here in Ruston, Louisiana, loving it as their team leads it 21 to nothing. Well, Joe, talk about what this formation does. Well, it just spreads out the defense, and, you, and it creates holes all over the defensive backfield. And it, the plays are designed for the receivers to go and find those holes. First, you spread all your defenders out for the Broncos. You look for where those holes and those zones are, and then you just put those receivers in the seams where guys are for the Broncos are covering a certain area. Well, you get the guy in between two guys, two Broncos area, that's usually what creates the opening. You spread them all out, find the seams, and it's wide open. Don't forget, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll pick out that significant play, which is our play of the game, brought to you by Snake River Yamaha, the Treasure Valley's Yamaha Superstore. That's our play of the game, brought to you by Snake River Yamaha. 21 to nothing, Louisiana Tech dominating here in the first frame, and there's still a minute and a half to go as the Broncos try to get something going. Well, Joe, that was nearly a nightmare for the Broncos, but Nate Colbert uh, just kind of saying, give me that football and get out of my way. The big tight end uh, turning a, what could have been disaster into a nice pickup for BSU as they'll have the football on the 29. Well, it was a good heads-up play by Colbert because Chenard was letting it bounce, and it bounced the wrong way. Chenard thought it would bounce towards him. Colbert, with a heads-up move in his peripheral vision, saw the ball, grabbed it, and ran. Joe, one quick note about the Bronco defense. Do you think they're mystified by the no huddle offense? You know, I think they, they need to put uh, a guy on a receiver. And look who's in at quarterback. Nate Sparks, as we told you at the head of the show, he is in there. Dumping it off to Shenard Hartz. If he can turn the corner, he's got a lot of room. So enter Sparks at the one minute 20 mark of the first quarter. And earlier in the week, Coach Cutter told us that uh, what he might do is play, play Sparks in the second quarter. So here we are with just a minute left to go in the first quarter. Bart has not been able to get the team in the end zone. Enter Sparks and see what he can do with yeah, the team. Yeah, and he flat out said, 
I will play Nate before the first half is over, but then he'll probably go back to Bart again. So we will see the true two quarterback look for BSU in this football game as Sparks comes into the football game. Keep it on the ground, and Shenard gets enough for the first down. They're really mixing it up now with Aaron Hurley out, and Shenard in. Bart on the sidelines, and number one's in. Well, now the defense has to adjust to completely different personnel. Sparks provides a completely different look. Shenard Arch provides a completely different look. And Sparks doing what he did so far at the end of the last game, sparking his team, starting another drive. Of course, Nate, uh, prior to the Utah game on the season, two of seven for just eight yards and an interception. Kind of a miserable start for the senior, but now he is at the helm. Back to pass. He wants to go deep. He's got his favorite man, Rodney, trying to make the grab. That's intercepted. Frederick Lewis picking off the football. And Lewis is still on his feet. Lewis with his second interception of the season goes up top to bring it down. Nice play by the defense there. I tell you what, the Broncos had exactly what they wanted. They had single coverage on their best receiver. Rodney goes up and is actually going to tip the ball. Actually, he went right over the top of his hand, and it was tipped by Frederick Lewis to himself. So the ball was just a hair overthrown, as we can see on the replay. And Rodney doing his best to try to get up and get it, but it was Lewis who tipping it to himself for his second pick of the year. So the first turnover of the game, you see the big hit. That's what the crowd was roaring about. First turnover of the game going the way of Louisiana Tech as they have the football back in business again with 40 seconds. And finally, they get to the quarterback, and that's a rarity as Brian Johnson makes the sack. You know, last year, Brian Johnson made a sack causing a fumble. It was only, there were only 10 sacks given up by Louisiana Tech in all of last year. Only six sacks given up in all of this year in their first five games. And Brian Johnson, once again, getting his name in there for the big defensive sack. Part of the reason, the old line, but Tim Rattay just got that quick delivery. Not quite Dan Marino, but that's how you'd refer to it. Just gets rid of that ball in a hurry. And fires it, nearly picked off, but grabbed by David Newman. Well, Joe, I think Kevin Childs is thinking to myself, or himself, I had six points there. Let's see that one more time. Well, he's trying to make something happen. The Broncos need something, a turnover, anything like that. Watch number 43 and White come in. Oh, almost got a hand in there. And I tell you what, uh, this Tim Rattay, he does an excellent job of scanning the field. I see him checking off of two or three different receivers before he even throws the ball. This uh, shotgun formation suits him well. He sits back there, scans the field, and then finds the open guy. This should be the final play of the quarter in which the Broncos can't wait for it to expire. Rattay wasn't ready for the snap, and he will just go down with the football. And the Broncos finally get a break. Speaking of a break, that's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back. So far, it's been all Bulldogs here in Louisiana. The score says it all, but if you want to add to that, Joe, how about the numbers of total yards? Uh, Louisiana Tech, 222 compared to the Broncos, just a, what, six yards under 100? Boy, and I would guess good 200 of those through the air. Finally, they forced Tech to punt the football on the botch snap. So Tony Mamrell will be the deep man as he waits the kick of John Pruitt. Mamrell coming up, looking for some room, and he's got some running room. And Mamrell will get it across the midfield. Oh, he's still on his feet, and he stepped out of bounds. We've got a flag in there as Tony well. And Tony's play. really frustrated that he got, uh, what would you say, rebounded? <laughs> All right, yeah, he rebounded about three yards backwards uh, after the hit, but stayed on his feet. Nice balance by, by Mamrell. And it was a line drive type of punt, so it was very returnable for Mamrell. Here is the call. The Broncos... Uh, can't buy a break. Well, we're looking for a block in the back. Let's take a look at the lower left hand. It looks like 87. Mike Davison block right in the back, and that's uh, what the official saw. Certainly was a, a clip and well, backwards. Block in the back, yeah. Back, backwards we go again. 
Well, the Broncos thinking that uh, they would start the second frame off with a bang after the botch snap by Louisiana Tech and then the big penalty. What's tough about that block in the back, Dave, is Mamrell had already gained about 10 yards on the return, so it really doesn't help your team out that much. You just, okay, he's going to get tackled. Sometimes you just have to stand back and let it happen instead of adding to the, uh, a penalty like that. If you've just joined us, Louisiana Tech up 21 to nothing, and Nate Sparks moving in at the quarterback slot at the one-minute mark of that first quarter. Here's Nate running option. And it's interesting how quarterbacks are stereotyped. Nate, an option type of quarterback, we think, and Bart is the drop back. But, mm -hmm. Joe, that's really not the case. You know, I think this is the first time we've seen Nate run the option. Everyone expected him to fall out of the pocket when on the drive and, and take off running, but he didn't. He stayed in the pocket. In fact, like, Nate looked like the better drop back passer, and Bart looked like the better runner last week. Nate Sparks, a year ago, got injured right before this game. As the Broncos took on Tech in Boise, he could not play in the game. Sparks firing it up for the Corey Nelson back-to-back -back interception. Frederick Lewis, two in a row, his third of the season. It looked like Lewis was the intended receiver. Well, that time it was just the opposite of the interception the last time that, that Nate threw it. The first one was an overthrow, this one an underthrow. It's always, it's so tough with a touch pass like this. See, it's a play action. Play action to Chenard. Going deep is Nate Sparks, and you'll see the ball just hangs and hangs, hangs in the thick, humid air. Look in the way of Corey Nelson, who had a step on his receiver, but when it's underthrown like that, all of a sudden the advantage goes the other way, and this time it's Frederick Lewis, three interceptions already. And now you begin to wonder, did that backfire on Coach Cutter? Well, they didn't have any turnovers. Nate Sparks with two interceptions, trying to go deep. Louisiana Tech comes right back, the middle screen. Troy Edwards turns the corner, and if this guy gets loose, look out. So Edwards picks up about 14 yards on the play and a first down. What you'll see this time is one missed tackle ends up costing the Broncos an, an extra 10 yards. Edwards, just a quick little couple of steps up, takes it, he's looking for his blockers. He looked inside and, oh! Couple of tackles just right at the, the ankles of Edwards, and boy, that was that was well blocked. First down. We talked about all the substitutions that the Broncos are forced to make because of the heat. James Jordan makes the catch, and Jordan gets through a tackle of Isaac Henderson, and Jordan's still running. Jordan's got one man to beat, and he's in the end zone. Dave, we're going to see the exact same play to a different receiver. James Jordan will be off to the left-hand side of your screen. He's just going to take a couple of steps forward, run across the middle, take the screen, read the blocks. Now come the missed tackles. One there. Jordan. Another one there. Boy, and then Jordan has just picked, picked up another block, nice block behind him. And then Kevin Childs is able to run him down. Six just three before. yards later. Toss into the end zone, wide open for the touchdowns. David Newman, six feet, seven inches tall. He slam dunks it for six. Yeah, this guy was a backup quarterback for Louisiana Tech last year. Now he's, instead of trying to throw for touchdowns, he's taking them in for touchdowns. He's a big target, and once again, wide open. I think the Broncos really need to look at some man coverage because certainly the zone is not working. So Trent Wyrick, who's been a very busy man, with a point after. And the second quarter starting the way the first quarter did with a tech touchdown. They lead it 28 to nothing. You got anybody that can grab me a soda? Couple of Diet Cokes. Is there anybody run down, grab a couple of Diet Cokes? Lots of ice too. <laughs> it melts quickly. Boy, oh, now it's just getting hot out there. How do they go from that to this? Where's our guy that was here? Did he go? Oh, you sent him. All right, thanks. I'll 
let you talk to Coach Pepper. <laughs> Hey, they can, I mean, they got to score a couple of TDs here. Yes. They got to get 14. Broncos have scripted this one. Tech leading 28 to nothing. 13 minutes before the half. Joe, now you have to look at it and say, okay, damage control. What do the Broncos have to do to get back in this ballgame? Well, maybe they're going to switch quarterbacks again. Bart was moving the team. They just would stall right around that 35 to 40 yard uh, line area. But they were moving the ball with Bart in the backfield. Maybe the, the experiment didn't work. Need to try going back to what was working earlier. At least on this Saturday, early on, as Shenard Hartz takes it at the 11 yard line. And a big special teams play would help out in a big way as he gets it up to the 27. And let's see who's coming out at the helm. Bart Hendricks is standing along the sideline, so that means Nate Sparks will come in. Coach Cutter likes to gather his team over on the sideline to call that first play. That way he's able to talk to them and, say, and maybe get them pumped up a little bit. And certainly they need to get pumped up here because the Broncos need to score down 28-0. The Broncos also, Joe, they kind of like to hide their personnel. So you don't know how many receivers are coming out, how many running backs. They've got one setback, three receivers. Two to the bottom of your screen and tight end Jim Brecky. Carried on the ground, Hearts and a nice run. For Shenard Hartz, who a year ago was playing receiver in the spring, was playing defensive back, and now the young man averaging about five yards a pop. Right, and that time he was running just on the inside of Jim Brecky, the, the tight end out of Capitol High School, the senior. Talk about how well he catches the ball. That time he just pushed his defensive end out, and Shenard getting a good game. Well, Nate Sparks with a couple of interceptions in this ball game, trying to get it on the right track. Firing it off to Brad Arbin. And Arbin is a load to bring down. As you can see, they try to hogtie the big man. Arbin uh, goes 6'2", 240 pounds. As we told you, the senior last week had a touchdown. Well, you talk about a big load to bring down Arbin. See, when he gets the ball, the first guy will come and try and bring him down. It'll be number 30. Roderick Pernetter comes in to put on the finishing touches and does a little flip. Woo! And that's, that's what it takes to bring down Arbin. So the Broncos trying to pick up one yard to keep this drive going. Third and short. Hearts. Will not do it. Well, Joe, it seemed like that was an opportunity to run option there. Certainly was, and we haven't seen uh, a whole lot of option out of Nate Sparks. We saw him go, go off towards the left-hand side of the field. His last particular drive, but uh, boy, offensively the Broncos trying different uh, techniques, different things. So far, none of it's working. Well, Louisiana Tech has only had to punt the football one time. On the other side, though, Mr. Gonzalez has been a very busy man booting it for BSU. There is a flag on the play, and let's see what it is this time. Seems like all the infractions so far have been against the Broncos, Joe. Well, it's home field advantage here for Louisiana Tech. This time, it's another five-yard penalty against the Broncos. Minor mistakes add up, and it all started with the, the knee pads, which That's cost them a timeout. timeout. Delay of the game, which stopped a couple of drives. Mm -hmm. Broncos need every break they can from here on out, trailing it by four touchdowns. So Gonzalez will scoot back five yards. And last week, we talked about his great punting. This week, he just does get it up to the midfield mark. And that's where Louisiana Tech will have a first and 10. So a short field here for Louisiana Tech to operate with. They haven't used a whole lot of clock so far this, this half because they score quickly and they've been scoring often.
We are in Ruston, Louisiana, home of the La Tech Bulldogs. A guy by the name of Carl Malone played basketball here. Pretty good hoop player. Not too bad. Terry Bradshaw played football here. Not a bad quarterback. Uh, he, he played okay, right? Four Super Bowls. Right now, Tim Rattay looks like a Super Bowl MVP. Back to pass and complete. So Cedric Williams making the catch last week against Wyoming, a game in which uh, Tech lost. Picked up the ball four times for 80 yards. Similar pattern that I've seen the Broncos run. They send one receiver deep. They send Cedric Williams on, a, on an out pattern. You saw Ross Barris backpedaling because it looked like Williams might be going deep and they just cut it off, do an out pattern and, and uh, get five yards. Rattay never seems to get himself into trouble. Now the receivers, on the other hand, you're in a lot of trouble when you drop a ball like that. But just like the pass before, always throws it so uh, the defender doesn't really have a chance to pick it off. Look at those yards, 307 yards in the first half. I mean, his career best was 590 yards against Nebraska in the opening game of the season back at the end of August. And here he is with already over 300 yards in the first half on record pace. Joe, we haven't seen a lot of dive running plays by Tech. No. Why, why should you when you're getting <laughs> five, ten yards a pop each pass? That's not in the package. On third and five, Broncos trying to make a play. And guess who's still up? Guess who's got the first down? Troy Edwards. <laughs> And Edwards has a few words for Ross Ferris. You see three defensive backs converge around Edwards, but he's open for just long enough to get him the ball. That's all the time he needs. Damian Schilling is there. You see Ross Ferris come in at the end. It's not for lack of players. It's just such a quick strike, quick hitting offense that it's so tough to defend. At the 10 minute mark, Rate again pumps once. He's going to go deep for the speedster, Edwards, who was wide open. And Damien Schilling was very happy that Mr. Rate overthrew that football. Yeah, because he was wide open. A little up and go on that particular play. Schilling was in man on man coverage. It's awfully a dangerous place to be when you're going up against Edwards, but that's exactly where he was. Edwards got a couple of steps on him after the pump fake, and fortunately for the Broncos, overthrown. So it is second down and 10. Football is at the 39 of BSU. Broncos trailing at 28 to nothing. All tech thus far. Middle screen to Hampton. Brian Johnson trips up Hampton. He may even have lost a velocity. Let's watch the, the two guys working together. Here you see the quarterback in the large part of your screen, and there's Hampton underneath. Just such a quick little pattern. Doesn't gain a whole lot of yards, but uh, you see Hampton, it's a completion. It is positive yardage. Hampton, uh, a native, a local, right here from here, right here in Ruston, Louisiana. Joe, what about this play? Third and nine. Bronco D's got to hold him. They need a turning point of some, some sort. They're going to send everybody, and picking it apart is the speed demon, Troy Edwards, with 4-4 speed. Even Ross Ferris can't catch him. As he rambles 38 yards on a third and nine for the touchdown of the fifth of this ball game. Well, you give him a step, and he'll take a mile, and that's exactly what he did there. The, the play was designed to go to the inside. Everybody overruns the coverage, and then he just takes one little look to the outside and puts on that incredible speed. We've been talking about NFL players, NFL teams looking at players. We don't need to look too much further in uh, New Orleans other than Ray and uh, Edwards. Point after, another touchdown, another score. Troy Edwards looking unstoppable as is Tech, 35 to nothing.
hear about this year after they had that opening loss to Nebraska where their offense produced so many yards. They came here against Central Florida and were actually blown out against Central Florida. So the home fans here haven't had a whole lot to cheer about. They're starting to pile it on a little bit to give the homecoming fans something to root about. Well, and look at their schedule, Joe. Central Florida featuring Dante Culpepper, Texas A&M, Nebraska, Wyoming at Wyoming. They've had a tough schedule. Sure. They're showing they're a pretty good football team today. We were not sure that they were going to be uh, up to the task at hand, and they've come out like gangbusters. Well, having only won one game, uh, I guess technically two, one because of a forfeit, but having only won one game, you're thinking, well, this team is going to roll over. But no, they have played two top 20 opponents. They played uh, they played them awfully close, too, especially in that Nebraska game. Nebraska looks like uh, maybe one of the front runners for a national championship this year, and they stayed with them. Well, Joe, I, I hate to say it, at the bottom of our screen, we see the diamond formation. And the Broncos finally stopped Tech, and that was going to Troy Edwards from the get-go. And Coach Kraut and Gary says, hey, you got to have more than two options here. Of course, he was a grad assist at BYU. We told you he was a pole vaulter at Idaho State. And uh, interesting how his trails have been very close to Dirk Cutter all the way to Boston College. Right. Uh, when Croton left there as the quarterback's coach, he actually said, hey, Dirk Cutter should be your guy. And uh, Cutter came in and took over for Croton in the BC program. Tony Mamerol is the deep man waiting for this punt. Catches it all the way back at his 11-yard line. And he's not going to go any further than that as Tech puts on the Larry Wright hold, making the stop. Bronco ball when we come back. seen that bulldog come out of that tent yet? Actually, I saw him down here on the other side oh. of the field at the beginning of the game. They had him down there on a leash. What do you call that, a pup tent? <laughs> I know, we've still got the second half to go. Okay, uh, Howard, uh, can I ask you one question? Bart Hendricks. Bart Hendricks is in the lineup, so maybe you guys can come out with an ISO of him just so I'd say, look who's back in the game, then we can go to the puppies, puppy, pup tent, as Joe calls it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. No, we don't have to do it. No. That's fine. 35 nothing. Tech with the lead. Coach with the change as Bart Hendricks moves back into the lineup. Of course, this is no surprise, Joe. The score is a surprise, but this so far is going as the script calls for what Coach Cutter told us. Part effective, six for eight for 72 yards. Let's we'll see if he can move the team. Hendricks with two receivers will keep it on the ground. Aaron Hurley piled up. Of course, what's important to remember in a game like this is the fact that uh, you got to get out of Dodge without any injuries. Sure, but you still have to keep that momentum going because Big West play starts a week from today. Right, you don't want to sort of shush this game off to the side because you would love to get a win here and, and go in on a winning note, but uh, you, you don't want to have those injured players for when conference, the real important season starts. Well, you think about the psyche too as Hendricks completes the ball to Rodney and Smith gets the first down, a face mask as well as they throw the flag right there. But the psyche is the big thing, Joe. You just you still want to have that same believing attitude that you had a week ago. Well, you know, the Broncos are fully capable of marching down the field. We saw it in the first quarter. They've uh, hidden it away from us for about a, the second quarter. But here we go. Rodney Smith is going to do the curl pattern, makes the catch, and then watch his face mask as he goes out of bounds. Willis just gets a handful 
as he goes out of bounds, gets flagged, and Broncos get a, a break. One of few today, Rodney Smith, the 220-pound, six-foot senior, the star, making the winning catch last week against Utah. As you see what's in store, of course, North Texas. I don't know if you call it a respite, but uh, a non-conference game with Weber State, and then it's all Big West from Utah State to Idaho. And of course, we'll have uh, all the road games right here on Channel 6. Broncos trying to win the title and get into the Humanitarian Bowl the end of December. Hendricks, two-pound run. I think that ball bounced off the turf. Number 44 thinking, man, that was my second big catch of the game. And that one might have been just as well off the turf because there was no blocking ahead of him. It was just a quick hit to the what's called what Cutter calls the H back, sort of like another tight end. Ron Pound and uh, just bounced off the turf. He would have been tackled right there if he would have caught it. So to bring up a second and ten for the sophomore from Marino, Hug High School. A chance to visit that school as Rodney. Uh, can't hang on to the football last year during the Big West basketball tournament. Rodney, not too far from home here. He's uh, Louisiana, right next door to Texas, and Rodney from Galveston, Texas. Trying to make the catch this time. It was thrown a little bit uh, behind him. Tried to adjust, got his hands on it, but it'll bring up a third down. Broncos need to convert one of these. No option here is they need to pick up 10. They've got to get it to the 45. Hendricks back to pass to Rodney goes up a little too hot to handle I don't know if he'd had the first down even if he would brought that down We can see what kind of day it is as Rodney just takes his hat off and throws it down Not only is it a, a difficult game on the scoreboard, but it is hot and humid out Yeah, it's tough not to be frustrated uh, with uh, the series of offensive plays they've seen our or defensive plays uh, take your pick Well tech is not uh, backing off one bit as no. John Gonzalez gets ready to boot it to the most dangerous man on the football field. Troy Edwards. Gonzo with the boot. This time he gets a nice kickoff. Edwards bobbles it. Let's see if the Broncos can pick up the loose football. I believe BSU has the football. And that is the case. Well, Joe, there have not been a lot of breaks for BSU, but they'll take them whenever they come. Sure, and here's a here's a bonus because they have not spent very much time in Louisiana Tech's side of the football field. And this time they're going to get a nice short field to work with, bouncing right off of the chest of Edwards, generally fairly sure-handed. That's why he's back there. He's on punt return. He's on kick return. He's actually on kick coverage as well. I believe the only team he's not on is his punt coverage. So Edwards is out there all the time, he usually has a good nose, good hands for the ball. Uh, that time backfires and the Broncos get a break. Was it that Aaron Hurley that picked up that football? Looked like 24 was down. Speaking of a guy that's all over the football field. So Hendricks back on the field. Little play action. Broncos might want to strike quickly. Hendricks, he's all familiar with this, Joe. Yeah, in fact, when I saw him stumble there, it reminded me of that 72-yard run because on that particular play, he stumbled just a little bit coming out of the gate. And I was thinking, wow, we're going to see it all over again. Hendricks. Number 17, play action pass, goes back in the pocket, surveying the field, nobody's open, and he just flushes it, flushed out to the left, saw the little stumble there, and tries to keep the balance, but gets a good gain for the Broncos. Get a good look at Bart Hendricks, who was expecting big things of this ball game when we talked to him last night. Off to Aaron Hurley. And Hurley gets the first down. Joe, uh, right now the Broncos going with their no huddle offense. What do they call this? Well, it's their two-minute drill. It's a, they, they like to call it red ball because this is something they work on at the beginning of practice and the end of practice every day. So it's something that they're very used to doing. Heck, we saw it, uh, the two-minute drill, red ball at the end of the game, and it scored wonders, 99-yard drive against Utah. Well, Joe, uh, red ball worked for Louisiana Tech as they went without a huddle. Hendricks trying to say, here's our version as Rodney goes up, nearly picked off again as Bobby Gray was on the cover. Well, I don't think it's any mystery that Louisiana Tech knows who they're throwing the deep ball to. Today. Right, especially the one that they throw uh, throw up in the air and try to let Rodney go up and get it. They've got double coverage on Rodney in the end zone. Rodney is trying to go up and get it. A little overthrown again. 
receivers doing their part uh, today. The ball's either been a little overthrown, a little underthrown, and that's created a lot of the problems for the Broncos today. So we have a timeout on the field. Remember, coming up at the end of the game, Joe and I will announce the Work Care Northwest Player of the Game. Work Care Northwest, today's solution for workers' compensation risks. That's coming up at the end of our end of the game, our player of this contest. Coach Cutter thinking, okay, let's get something going here, whatever it takes. Dave, you were talking about confidence going into to the end zones. 35 to nothing. Maybe a little shift in confidence is all a team needs. They get their, their ball into the end zone and they're thinking, hey, we were able to stop them. We forced a punt, we forced a fumble. Let's see what happens in the second half. The Broncos have scored more than 35 points in a game this season. They were up in the 40s in one game. They scored 31 last week. So the Broncos are fully capable of scoring 35 points. The key is being able to slow down that Louisiana Tech offense. Joe, you did a story earlier in the year about the the coolers, the blowing some water and a fan. How does that, what are those called and why don't the Broncos have those? <laughs> and all they have is fans. We, we had them, they were called Mr. Cool over at the uh, at Bronco Stadium and, and they were actually on both sides of the field. They provided it for the opposing team and I uh, they had some fans earlier and that's all I saw. No Mr. Cool here. <laughs> Broncos after the tech timeout faced with a second and ten. Henrik's back of the pocket firing it up top. Well I think the intended receiver was Corey Nelson but uh, Corey didn't think that as the ball was, uh, I think, way above him. Well, Corey only stands right around six foot, two inches tall. I think he needed to be seven two to even get a, a good look at that one. It was right right over his head. I think maybe there was just a little bit of miscommunication on what route Corey was running because it looked like Bart uh, expected him to be a little further downfield. So the Bulldogs taking back-to-back -back timeouts. This one at the four-minute mark. Just before the intermission, the best dressed men go to Knopf Singers Men's Store. That's in downtown Napa. We want to thank Dave at Knopf Singers for providing our wardrobe for this game. We were hoping today, last week, you did a good job getting us in winning colors. That's right. I, we're going to have to change the tie next week because uh, this one's not working too well. <laughs> Boise State trying to pop one in the end zone and then figure out a way to get the football back. Dave Listen. Tester and Joe Hughes here in Ruston, Louisiana. We uh, flew in with the team last night. Coach Cutter, I guess we left early in the morning, uh, but it seemed like it was last night when we got here. Joe, you had quite an experience last night with uh, going to one of the high school football games. It's crazy here when it comes to prep ball. Yeah, we went to a, a West Monroe high school football game in West Monroe, Louisiana. They're the top-ranked team in the state. They had 6,000 screaming high school fans there. It was something to see. West Monroe beat How many Texas fans? 6,000 for a high school game. Wow, unbelievable. Third down and 10. Antoine in motion. Wilson coming back down. Hendricks rolling that way. It's the throwback to Hurley. Looks like they had it blocked properly. But Hendricks knows he didn't throw a very good ball there. Yeah, Ryan Groneman got around to the outside. If, uh, if Hurley is led perfectly, he has a whole lane right along the left side of the field to get into the end zone. Bart's thinking to himself, boy, we're just not... Nothing's going our way right now. Not even for a little short pass. They've overthrown the long ones. This time, overthrown the, the short one. No short decision pass. here, huh, Joe? You just go for it. Yeah, they, they need that aggressive play. That's not going to stop just because they're down 35 nothing. They're aggressive to the end here. So the Broncos have to get the football to the 14-yard line of Louisiana Tech. Hendricks throwing it up. I don't know if it's great coverage. Or if Bart's just struggling, but uh, it's very difficult, obviously, Joe, when you're trailing 35 to nothing because the defense knows what you have to do. You know, a situation like this, last week, both Bart and Nate playing excellent games. This week, both Bart and both Nate are just struggling. That time it was thrown behind Brecky. Brecky's a big target. Would have been fairly close to the first down. They got to be able to pull it in. So Tech with the football. After the Broncos cannot convert on fourth down. Three receivers, they're not going to back down. They're thinking 357, that's a lifetime, and they're going to throw it to Bobby Raytel, and Raytel's off to the races. 
Well, if you're a running back in this offense, you got to be able to catch the football, and this guy can catch, and we know he can run. Well, defensively, you already have four or five receivers that you're worrying about, maybe six at times. That, that pump fake works really well to, to spring somebody into the backfield like that. That time, Raytail probably pulled up just a touch, just throw it over the top of the defense, and another huge gain. I think they're going to be close to 400 yards in uh, passing yardage at the end of the half. Rote going for the receiver Troy Edwards. Looked like Edwards was tied up with Dempsey D's on the cover there. And it's an incomplete pass at the 338 mark. Well, it was no question, Dave, they were going to come out and start throwing the ball. When they're calling those timeouts to stop the clock, <laughs> they wanted to have at least four minutes, I guess, to, to run down the field when, in essence, they only need two one and a half, possibly, the way they just get the big plays and move this ball quickly. So Rote, again, back to pass, being pressured a little bit. Always nice to have number 16 to dump the football off because he can make so much happen. They talk about that with Jerry Rice so many times. But what does that mean when you do so much with it after you catch it? Well, a lot of times, a lot of the passes to Edwards are only about three or four yard passes, but what he does is he makes a move or two to spring himself for big yardage. Rate rolling out of the pocket, get it and see, look at the moves that he has inside, outside. I'm going to make two, three, four guys miss before, and this was only, you know, a, a, a gain of about six yards. He's able to do that and gain 20, 30, 40 yards because of those moves. Dempsey Dees was on the bottom of that pile making the stop. It is a third down and four. Broncos in a deep hole, but desperately they do not want it to get any deeper. The question is, one of the tech guys draw the Broncos off sides? Bobby Setzer and John Wright have been saying yes. It looked like the tech offensive line was moving backwards and the Broncos were just coming in as well to make sure the officials knew that those guys moved. Of course, fans at home, Joe, may be asking, why are they still passing? Why are they still going without the huddle? When you got two guys who are Heisman candidates, you want to play up their numbers. That's just the way it goes. Well, when Rattay's leading the nation in offensive yardage passing, Edwards is doing the same receiving. They're trying to pad their stats right now. On third and nine, Rattay, middle screen to the speedy one. Edwards, a couple of moves. If he turns the corner, you're not going to catch him. 19-yard touchdown for Troy Edwards, putting on a game of his own right now. What would you call that, Dave? Slippery? I'm trying to think of the right adjective to describe it. He's going to start clear over on the right side of the field. Remember, he's going to score his touchdown on the left side of the field. How many Broncos are going to get a shot at him? Two or three right there. There's another one in Marcel Yates. Another missed one. It's just his, he's so elusive. Starts on the the right side of the field finishes on the left and just creeps into the end zone. The extra point to make it 42 to nothing on the way. And just like that, Tech caps another drive off. Sometimes, even though you've seen it, you know it's coming, executing and stopping it can be a totally different thing. Joe, I guess the question fans are going to ask, why so close last year and now all of a sudden this season? I mean, what, what we have 31-27, and now it's 42 to nothing. Well, all kinds of variables. Could be the weather, could be you know playing in front of the home fans as opposed to the, the road fans. Fans are even cheering the, the cheerleader. <laughs> We're to the stage. We're talking about the cheerleaders, but he caught it... Uh, Caught it in the cup, I guess you might say. The Megahorn made the catch. <laughs> so there's a flag on the play, trying to see what... Uh, Booted it out of bounds, so they'll get it at the 35. Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty proud said, of himself. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's trying to get uh, the role of Athlete of the Week, and Joe, describe this catch. <laughs> yeah, it's like the cone is open. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like, uh, you know, they, they talk about the uh, ice cream cone catch, you know, in baseball. <laughs> well, that, that was a cone, sure enough. So the Broncos with the football at the two and a half minute mark. They trail this one 42 to nothing. Hendricks off to Hurley. Hurley trying to find the handle. 
And uh, doesn't do much good as Mr. Edwards comes up and makes the big stop. Now you start wondering just, just how much can the Broncos take of this? 42 to nothing in the first half. Well, Joe, unfortunately, they don't have a choice <laughs> in this game because uh, they've still got 30, what, 32 minutes of football to go for the Broncos. I think what we're going to find, though, in the second half is what kind of character this club has. A loss of two by Hurley. I think the Broncos, by running the, the football, are saying, let's get out of this half and get into the locker room. And try to make some sort of adjustment, especially defensively, to try to slow up this well-oiled passing machine. This is looks like a, a pro type of offense, the way they're able to just sit back in that shotgun formation, read all the different receivers, and Ratay is just pinpoint accurate. Hendrick slips on the turf. Had to get that one off in a hurry. John will sit on the coverage. Antoine uh, trying to go up for the grab, but case there where Bart just slipping on the turf, had to get up and just release it as quick as possible. First time we've really seen the turf slip today. Right, yeah, you, you'd expect it to have been more of a factor in this game since it rained so much this morning. Bart has been able to throw an accurate ball by doing that. He did that last week against Utah and actually threw it right on the money. It wasn't too bad of a throw, it was just a little bit high. So Gonzalez will boot the football from his 32. Nice looking boot. The thing that's not so nice is when 16 gets the football, you don't know what he's gonna do. We got flags everywhere. Probably a block in the back as Edwards gets it up to the 21. Well, I think every official back there saw that one because we saw three flags flying simultaneously. It looks like Edwards is a little slow getting up. Well, I think he's just flat out exhausted right now. <laughs> He's been uh, running quite a bit. Unfortunately for the Broncos, it's been into the end zone. Block in the back against Louisiana Tech. Our game clock today brought to you by Thompson's Maytag, the dependable place for all your home appliances. We want to thank the folks at Thompson's Maytag for our game clock. Well, day 59 seconds for this passing offense. They've scored a couple, actually four times in under a minute this season, Louisiana Tech has. First time we've seen uh, Rete get right behind the center. <laughs> More of a traditional <laughs> offense, so it looks like Tech is going to let the, this one expire and head into the locker room. I guess the question now, how long will Tim Rattay play in the second half? You know, as a, as a football player, Joe, you don't want to sit down. Well, no, he wants to keep pouring pour on the number. When things are working well, you like going to it. For Rattay, he's thinking, you know, I set a career mark, the opening game of the season with 590 yards passing. I've got a home, feet, home crowd here that I'm trying to impress. Maybe he'll just keep throwing it through the rest of the third quarter, see how much he can get. I'm a little bit surprised they don't take a knee instead of uh, opening up Rate for a hit or two. He is their, their big play quarterback. Well, that will be the uh, last play the Broncos are saying, thank heaven, of this first half. 42 to nothing, the homecoming crowd loving it. Broncos trying to regroup. We'll be back right after this. receive the ball here in the second half. <laughs> That's true. And they certainly get a, an opportunity now to try some things that maybe they wouldn't uh, necessarily try in a close game. 
Joe, you're certainly looking sharp today and with that. <laughs> Thank you. The, the best dressed men go to Nafsinger's Men's Store in downtown Nam Nampa. We want to thank Dave and the gang for providing us with the fine wardrobes. I know he's watching the game in his store today and uh, wishing the Broncos were a little closer, but uh, we know they're on their way regardless of this one. One thing you'd say, I'm glad this is not a big West football game as Tech starts things in the second half, kicking it off. Shenard Hartz running up to his 14-yard line, and that's where the Broncos will try to get things going, and Shenard starts things off up to the 32-yard line, and that's where uh, BSU will have it first down and 10. Well, we've been talking about gut check time quite a bit in the first half as uh, the Broncos were falling further and further behind. Well, now you've had some time to rest. You've had to some time to listen to your coaches, make some adjustments. Now let's see what the Broncos are able to do coming out with a, a fresh start of sorts. And Nate Sparks will be the quarterback to start things off here in the third quarter. And I think uh, Coach Cutter is just stuck with his script in this game. Right. Now he's going to see how he's still going to try out each quarterback and see which one is the hot one in the second half. This is nothing new for Coach Cutter. He told us uh, throughout the summer. I'm not afraid to go with two quarterbacks. Corey Nelson bobbles it for a minute and hangs on as it gets into tech territory. There is a flag. Do you think it was a late hit on Nate? Uh, very possibly. Yeah, in fact, Nate is signaling down because he, he knows what the call was. It was a late hit on him. Play action pass to Aaron Hurley. Nate, a little scramble out to the right side. And then look at the concentration by Corey Nelson to keep his hands on the ball and, and stay in bounds. Now we'll take a look at... Uh, Plus 15. Yeah, it, it, late hit uh, was must have been a very violent variety or very flagrant. Here's Nate throwing the ball, and we'll see Pop come in. Yeah, he, he had let go of the ball. You need to hold up, and it looked like it was Darren Harrington coming in. He's one of the team captains on this team, so not the way you want to start or set an example as a team captain for La Tech. Just underway here in the second half. Broncos trailing, but on the move. Nate Sparks off to a pounder, and Ron gets it out, and then another flag, another late hit as Ron Powell makes the reception, and they'll tack 15 onto that. So Louisiana Tech making some mental mistakes, although they've got to feel like they've got this game in the hand. But all of a sudden, the Bronco momentum coming out of the locker room is, is it's all Broncos. Nice catch by Pound, pulling that baby up from right around his knees. And Pound going to get out of bounds, and there's the pop, the late hit right around the hip area. And that's why, why they're going to march downfield even more. I'm trying to think, Weezer's got a, a pretty good receiver on their high school football team this year, don't they? Right. Uh, that would be uh, the Mad Rietta, young man, the punt, pass, and kick champion. And uh, yeah, they know each other, Ron Pound and the Mad Rietta boy. Levi, of course, at the beginning of the year, our Athlete of the Week. And don't forget, we have our uh, United Dairymen of Idaho's Athlete of the Week. That's Monday night at halftime of Monday Night Football. Good one coming up this Monday night. Remember, Monday Night Football starting a little earlier than usual this season, 6 o'clock. But the Pack and the Vikings. Boise State trying to pop this one into the end zone. The end around. Antoine trying to get into the end zone, and that was a very successful play. Last couple of weeks, first time we've seen it today. Remember what we saw? That play actually set up another play from a, a week ago. Antoine takes the ball and makes a nice run here, but remember, they'll throw the ball out of this set as well because Antoine is one for one in his quarterbacking career at BSU as a senior. He passed it back to Nate Sparks last week for a good game, around 34 yards. Good run by Wilson. It was fun at the Bronco luncheon uh, last Monday. Of course, they're every Monday, and uh, Coach Ketter was teasing. Antoine said, if you'd have thrown a better pass, we would have had a touchdown. <laughs> All in jest. As Hurley tries to turn it in, he gets it up to the two-yard line. I'll tell you what, I didn't think Tech's defense was that solid, but they look great today. Yeah, through the whole first half, they were shutting down everything, especially the running game when the Broncos would try to get something going and keep that balance that Coach Cutter likes to see. The running game really wasn't able to get anywhere. And then you toss in those those turnovers on top of that, and it just stifles your offense. Joe, on third and one, do you like option here with Nate Sparks? Oh, sure, why not? I've noticed that they have not run the option to the right side of the field when Nate's in there. They've run it to the left side just about every time. So we've got Ron Pound on the outside on the right. Actually, he's in motion now. See if they run the option. Sparks at the helm. They give it off to Hurley, and Hurley 
depends on where they mark the football. Of course, that's always the case, isn't it, on a first down? But uh, And then Hurley gets a little shove afterwards. Well, that's what football's all about, and Aaron knows that. Hurley's just going to be a straight dive right up the middle, actually a delayed dive. And see if we can see any open along the left side. Not much there. Hurley trying to get the... That's big O. Yeah. Big o Otis Pitts, the nose guard. And the, the offensive line coaches were talking about Joey Horvath's biggest challenge would be going up against Otis Pitts, the big nose guard. Right, and that Otis Pitts, he tries to pattern himself after Warren Sapp, uh, another fine Southern defensive lineman that uh, is playing in the NFL now. Joe, that offensive line has been simply sensational, and it may get even a little bit better next week. Uh, Willie Van Gorder comes back, or at least his plan is to start running on that uh, injured knee that he hurt in the Washington State game. On Tuesday, if he comes back, kind of shuffles the line around with Ryan Groneman sliding over to the center slot. Willie Van Gorder, who desperately wanted to play in this game because it's so close to home for him. Yeah, you betcha. Well, we've got fourth down now, Dave, and we were talking about aggressive play. Of course, being down 42 to nothing, are you going to go for a field goal? Absolutely not. We're going to try to poke it into the end zone because they need seven points, not three. Now remember, the Broncos are going to try to figure out a way to get, what, a half a foot maybe, Joe? Yeah, just about it. Here There's the option. option. Nate for the touchdown. Well, we, we were calling for that a play earlier, but that's all right. Nate Sparks goes in for the touchdown. The Broncos at the 12-26 mark of the third quarter finally get into the end zone, and it was a nice drive by BSU. Well, they had run this play off to the left side every time, but this time Nate just going to tuck it and read the, the hole, and boy, there was no one touched him until he got into the end zone. We were calling for it a play before, but boy, you're right, Dave. It works just fine on fourth down. Put seven on the board. Well, Todd Belcastro with the extra point that sets the record in the midst of all this. Todd Belcastro with a record-setting extra point. And here's the Broncos scoring in Louisiana for the first time. We'll be back after this. Yardage, 435, 140. All passing. Todd Belcastro booting it on the ground, and that's where Louisiana Tech will take over in their high-powered offense. Gene Blameyer, the Boise State Athletic Director, joining us now as you look at that scoring drive. Gene, we needed to get you up here earlier because you came up here. Broncos marched at sixth place, 68 yards, and Nate Sparks goes in for the touchdown. Well, I wish it was that simple. Uh, that's a nice way to start the, the second half after uh, that hurricane blew through here the first half. Louisiana Tech with the football. They have not changed up anything. They've still got five receivers in the game. Uh, their quarterback going without the huddle again. They like to pile it up, and there's a fumble on the football field. Do the Broncos have it? Yes, indeed. How about that? Well, we'll just play this one as halves, and the Broncos so far doing quite well in the second half. That's right. This they got all the breaks in the first half. We definitely are going to need some here in the second half to get back in this thing. I don't think that one never got off the ground. It was on the ground a long time before <laughs> somebody decided to pick it up. Well, I almost thought Tim Rotay was throwing it in the ground the way it looked and I thought why would he do that on first down and the Broncos come up with the pigskin and they're ready to go. I'm just glad one of our guys decided to pick it up. Yeah, it was nice to, to gather that in. So Nate Sparks has the football for BSU. There's a good look at Rodney, who would like to get in the end zone as well. BSU trailing 42 to 7. Sparks back in the pocket. Intended for Shenard Hartz. There is a flag on the play. And I think that uh, the defender got his hand caught in the cookie jar there. You know, we do have an opportunity, obviously, to get back in this game a little bit. We're watching the replay. Yeah, Nate Sparks looking the way of um, Rodney, or actually was Shenard Hartz. And yeah, that was well early, the contact by the defensive back. And you're going to get that call every time when you're tackling him three yards before the ball gets there. Bobby Gray from what they call the rover position coming in to, to make the hit. And so the Broncos keep the drive going. And Gene, I, 
you always like to think you always have a chance, but I think more than anything, Broncos want to come out here and show some character because the all-important Big West Conference season starts next week. Right. We need something to build on uh, for for next week and and uh, the rest of the season here in the second half. Yeah, we got a chance to get the momentum going. As Shenard Hartz carries the football, picks up about three or four. Of course, said we'll be back on the blue next week, and the Broncos happy to come home to the home crowd against North Texas. Absolutely. We're going to have three home games in a row, and uh, as you can see with Louisiana Tech here, it's great to be at home and uh, playing in, in your own surroundings, and uh, obviously uh, we're going to be excited about coming back and playing in Bronco Stadium, and, and the more people we can get out there, the better. We want to make sure that we add on November 7th. That's at New Mexico State uh, in Big West play as they turn and throw it to Shenard Hartz turning the corner. Not much room for Shenard, but uh, as we see the schedule, uh, North Texas, then Weber State, Utah State, uh, all big games, but two of those three, not much bigger than that at home. No, that's right. Uh, we're getting into the conference, uh, the, the battle for the humanitarian bowl bid, and uh, you know we'll be ready to go. And, and obviously, our fans can help us uh, set the tone next week in Bronco Stadium. Joe, third and eleven, need one here. Yeah, unfortunately, Shenard Hart couldn't get on track on that last one because he can be dangerous in the open field. See what Nate comes up with now. Sparks backs to throw, trying to get it to Corey. There will be a flag as the defender, Frederick Lewis, who has three interceptions, just kind of put his his hand in the hip pocket of Corey and kept him from turning around there. And there's a flag on the play. Let's see what exactly what happened by the defender. Oh, here's a good isolation on Corey Nelson. It's going to be very clear. You see, look at they get tangled up right there, and he just never lets go. Has a good hold on the number eight on the back of his jersey, and yes, that one's going to get called every time too. Corey didn't have a chance to run out and get underneath that. Think about breaks and what has happened to the Broncos. Not many in the first half, but here in the second half, their first drive, two late hit penalties, and now here on their second possession, two pass interference calls. Well, you know that's going to happen when you get up 42 to nothing. Uh, you're excited to start the game. This is a, was a critical game for. For Louisiana Tech, they haven't had a lot of success this season, and uh, this is a huge game for them to get some confidence. And now that they're up 42 to nothing, you know, to maintain that edge through a halftime is, is really difficult to do, and and that's why we have an opportunity to to get some momentum going here and and maybe capitalize on on the fact that they have such a big lead uh, that they're not mentally as sharp as as they obviously were in the first half. Broncos with uh, somewhat of a new look that Coach Cutter talked with us about two setbacks. In Aaron Hurley and Shenard Hartz. Twan Wilson goes in motion. They give him the football, tries to turn the corner, spinning. And he'll get up to about the 10. I think he's going to lose a yard on the play. Boy, that has been successful this season. Antoine Wilson is just dangerous every time he touches the ball. He has speed and he has moves, much like we've seen uh, Edwards uh, on the other side of the football. Can't quite get on track on this play. Gene, I, I wanted to ask you, that from your playing days when you played at UCLA, were you ever on the, the, the short end of a 42-7 to score? And how did you rebound from something like that? Well, uh, fortunately, I don't remember being, being this far down. Uh, nice run by Aaron Hurley. Uh, you know, there are games that uh, you get into and, and uh, get surprised early. And it's, it is real tough to, uh, to come back from a, a deficit like this. Here's Hurley on the replay right up the middle. So the Broncos are faced with a first down. The, the yard markers actually say third down. And the officials want to get that straightened out right away. We have a timeout on the field at the 959 mark. Broncos trying to punch it in. We'll be right back. What do you got there, Dean? Would you ask me about, you know, the home stage the community? Okay. There's a there's rumors out there that we sold out for the idea. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to make sure that sure. you know, we're not sold okay. out there. Can you guys uh, we want to I want to make it clear to everybody there in Boise, there are plenty of seats uh, still available for the, the Idaho game on November 21st. So it is not sold out at this time, uh, and the tickets are moving, but we've got plenty on sale, and we encourage everybody to come on down and, and get your seats now for that November 21st 
a season ending battle. Call that the set the record game. We'd love to pack the place as the, the Broncos play host to the Vandals. And of course, that we say the last game, we're hoping the last game is going to be December 30th, right? Absolutely. Of course, tickets for the Humanitarian Bowl just going on sale as well. As PSU tries to punch it in. First and goal for the Broncos as Corey Nelson runs to the bottom of your screen. They fake it to Corey. They give it off to Shannon Hartz. So a little uh, they slide of hand up. in the backfield worked great for the Broncos getting the score. They set that one up with the, the run to Antoine Wilson here a couple plays ago. Misdirection. They'll go the fake to Corey. Then they'll go inside to Shenard. They get the whole defensive ends moving with Corey Nelson. And then Shenard has the wide open lane. Nobody touches him clear to the back of the end zone. So Hart's going in for the touchdown. Todd Belcastro to add to his record. 59 extra points without a miss. Like we said, hidden amongst all this, you're saying, oh, 42-14. Todd Belcastro booting the extra point, continuing with his perfect streak. Pretty nice play right here. Well, you have to respect the speed of Corey Nelson coming on that fake reverse. And then, boy, everyone just overshifts for the defensive side of the ball for Louisiana Tech. And Shenard Hart's getting a good touchdown. Two quick touchdowns and only five minutes have gone by here in the second half. So the Broncos getting exactly what they need, scores and turnovers by Louisiana Tech. Well, you're exactly right, Joe. We had to have this. We had to show that we've got some character and that we can battle back from adversity. And to be able to come out and get two quick scores uh, is a tremendous lift for our team right now. And uh, let's just play the rest of this game as hard as we can and see what happens. If you love Bronco football, don't miss Bronco Sports Week with head coach Dirk Cutter and myself. That's on Channel 6 tomorrow night at 1020. Your official station, BSU Athletics. Coach, we're loving that show, especially our location. You built us a magnificent studio to do Bronco Sports Week. <laughs> Well, I tell you, the Allen Noble Hall of Fame is just a tremendous addition to our facilities, and we appreciate uh, all the people that have donated and contributed uh, to the stadium expansion. It just is fantastic. So the Broncos uh, try to find a little glimmer of light, have scored two quick touchdowns, 42 to 14, as Boom Boom Bell Castro boots it to Simon who will take it at the eight yard line and the Broncos come up with good special teams and that's where Louisiana Tech will have it first and 10 at the 25. Well, the Broncos obviously have made the offensive adjustments to turn things around a bit here in the third, third quarter. Now we're going to see if the defense can, uh, can do as well. Shore up that defense, try to slow down this uh, Louisiana Tech offense, which couldn't make any mistakes in the first half. Well, you know, offense is so much timing, and, and they're a little flat, hopefully, right now. We'll see. But, uh, you know, if they don't have that spring in their, their step like they did in the first half, and our defense does, this could be a, a vastly different second half. Nobody in the backfield as Ratay fires it very quickly. Troy Edwards, and Edwards is brought down in a hurry. Dempsey D's making the spot. Have you ever seen a player as quick as Edwards? No, I haven't, uh, especially uh, against us. He is just a phenomenal talent. He thinks he was face masked. Let's look at the tail end of that and see if somebody grabbed the, I think, the mask. I think he actually gets caught a little bit closer to his shoulder pad. We'll take a look at the hands of Dempsey D's and pulls him around. He just kind of collared him right around the shoulder pads. But, you know, uh, Edwards is going to try and get every extra yard he possibly can. Well, uh, there was a touch. You could see a touch on the face mask, but it certainly wasn't a touch that was going to uh, contribute to the tackle. Back to live action. Rote across the middle. It's a loose football. And Broncos nearly coming up with maybe, maybe another turnover as Kevin Childs almost to the right place at the right time. Well, this is what we have to do is get, uh, get some hands on the ball. Gene, I guess there's two sides of it. Uh, Broncos trying to get back in the game. Conversely, it's tough to tell your team when they're out 42 nothing. Hey, guys, keep your head in the ball game. No question. I think uh, Louisiana Tech's in a, in a tough position emotionally, but uh, obviously not on the scoreboard. Look at those numbers in the first half, but the Broncos trying to turn the table here in the second frame. Rate throws it up, and it's incomplete. So Broncos uh, playing some good defense. Of course, it didn't hurt that Rate fires that one up and a little too high. And Tech will come out and punt the football. Just to give you a little perspective on that Louisiana Tech offense, they had 430 some yards in that first half. They're only averaging, they're averaging 419 yards for the whole game passing. So just to see how on they were in that first half, that's how well they were throwing the ball. But boy, everything's looking the Broncos way to start the second half. Tech will punt it from the 15. 
hopefully they knew that that was their uh, their limit for a game and they won't get any the second half. Mamoral putting on a little dance. Tony gets piled up, but he still gets positive yards as they spot that one at the 31. So the Broncos will call the play over on the side. Nate Sparks will be the man at the helm. Coach Cutter sticking with his plans that he told us at the beginning of this game. Uh, going with Bart, switching up with Nate, coming back with Bart. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see Nate's, or Bart Hendricks a little later on. Weekday mornings, don't miss a beat. Wake up with Good Morning Idaho on Channel 6 with Joe Saylor, Jenna Cooper, and Steve Liebenthal with Pinpoint Weather. Start your mornings right. Weekdays at 6 on Channel 6 ABC. Sparks going to put it up, going to hang it on to the speedster. Corey Nelson goes up, brings it down. They said he was beyond the sidelines when he went up for that. But Corey, you just could tell he had a bead on that football all the way down. Corey had a catch in the first half, which was real tight on the sideline. We'll take a look at the from the end zone camera and see just how close this one was as well. The other one was awfully close. It was a real judgment call. We'll see Corey come down. Uh, you could argue he was forced out of bounds by the defensive back, uh, but that is another judgment call that the referee makes right there. Boy, you get a little nervous when they start throwing it around Frederick Lewis. Already three interceptions in this football game all against Nate Sparks so the Broncos with the incomplete pass second down and ten so far in the second half they've been magical Corey this time cannot hang on to the football bobbled that just for a second before dropping it and Frederick Lewis again on the cover Look in the way of Corey Nelson again, just trying to get him on track. This is a design rollout on the on the part of Sparks. Ball is there in the hands and just can't quite come down with it. Tight defensive pressure applied again by Frederick Lewis. This is a big third down for the Broncos. We've got to keep the ball as long as we can and, and try to capitalize on the on the momentum that we've uh, started to get here in the third quarter. Broncos need to get it up to the 41 yard line to keep the drive alive and Corey slipped on the turf. Of course uh, we were talking about the weather which Gene impeded on your golf game early this morning. It was raining cats and dogs and everything else but uh, the field pretty good shape. Yeah it's a it's a great facility and the, and the field's in excellent shape. Uh, did get a little rain this morning but I don't think enough to, to cause a whole lot of problems. So Gonzalez will come on to boot the football as the incomplete pass uh, forces the Broncos to go three and out. Get a good look at Gonzalez who uh, really came on last week. Good to see the youngster booting the football. Troy Edwards will await this kick as Gonzalez booms it back, sends Edwards all the way back, and he touched that football, so he's going to have to pick it up and run. That just gives you some idea how fast Edwards is as he picked it up at the one and just bolted out to the 16-yard line. That's where La Tech will have the football. That could have been a disaster for La Tech, but uh, when you got a player like Edwards on the field, he can usually make some good things happen out of bad situations, and he did it right there. At the start of each game, we're proud to bring you the commercial tire starting lineups. Commercial tire driven to be the best. Of course, Gene, uh, we talked a little bit about it, but a humanitarian bowl seems like it's a long ways away, but tickets just went on sale last week. That's right. Uh, October 1st, we uh, open up the sales for that and would encourage everybody in Boise to take a look at coming to that game. It's a great event for the city and for our conference. Bobby Raytel carrying the football across the 26. I think that's going to be a face mask call. Yeah. Of course, what is so great about the Humanitarian Bowl, Gene, it's it's such a family atmosphere, and I, I know some of the packages are set up that way, but all the things that go, not only with the Humanitarian Hall of Fame, but everything else, bring the kids, that's what we say. That's right, we've got a lot of events uh, going on a couple days before the game and, and uh, for the kids in the community with the Humanitarian Hall of Fame ceremonies, and it, it's a great week in Boise, and, and we're very proud to be host of this event. So the flag going against the Broncos. And it looks like Boise State is going to take a timeout. So with eight minutes remaining in the third quarter, Boise State trailing 14 to 14. If we just kept track of halves, they'd lead it 14 nothing here in the second half. We'll be back right after this. Indiana Tech, there we go. The 
home team leading at 4 42 to 14 but so far the Broncos have put on a great surge here in the second half. and that's the great thing about having the athletic director in the booth we're never out of a game Gene. we're that's never right. out of a game <laughs> during the timeout it was great Gene Blamer said hey a couple of breaks here and there we're right back in this football game but uh, you know you got to have that kind of attitude and simply put the Broncos coming out of the locker room are playing like they can get back in this one well they can there's uh, only half the quarters gone and, and we've scored twice at, at that rate we can get back into it but we're going to have to make some big plays uh, from here on out. So a pickup of three makes it second down and seven the Bulldogs with it in particular Bobby Raytel runs into Bobby Setzer and uh, we have not called Bobby Setzer's number a lot in this game. No we haven't uh, generally uh, Louisiana Tech's offensive line keeps the pressure away from Retay, and that's one of the specialties of uh, Bobby Setzer is putting the pressure on the quarterback. This time he's going to sneak his way through. That an unbalanced line on the left side. Setzer squeezes through and puts the pressure on. Setzer number four and tackles. Has a little different hairdo we noticed uh, this week. Uh, it was with his folks, and I think it was his mom's. That, I can't believe he cut his hair like that. <laughs> I told Bobby, you better do it while you're young. Third down and eight, big play for the Broncos. Fire it up and caught. So just when you think the Broncos are going to get a break there because there were two players, Delwyn DeGreve comes up and makes it. DeGray makes the catch. It looked like there were two uh, receivers in the same spot. Keep your eye open for a tip on this play. Yeah, there were two receivers in the same spot. Yeah, tip the ball right there. So how fortunate mm. that is a break for Louisiana Tech because that ball was not intended for that part of the field. John Reidman getting his glove up there and tapping this one away. Johnny Reidman, who in his spare time works on his band. I, I told him I'm looking for a good country hit. He said, no way, it's all rock and roll. What more would you expect or what less from a defensive lineman as uh, Tech keeps the drive going? I think they may have lost a yard on that play. Reidman again in the middle of that one, this time putting pressure on the quarterback, and that was enough to uh, make this play go for a hardly, I guess maybe one yard is all they were able to get out of that. That's the kind of pressure you want to see on Rattay. Gene, it's not so much first and second down, but La Tech has been amazing on third downs. Well, they came out throwing every play in the first half, and it'll be interesting to see what they're doing here to try to control the ball a little more. Fake it to Rattel, and they go to the big tight end, David Newman. And when I say big, how about this? Six feet, seven inches tall, 225 pounds. Last week, he caught the ball four times. He's the go-to guy. He's an awfully big target, Dave, and... He played quarterback last year. It would have been interesting to see him lining up behind the center, <laughs> looking over the top of the, the offensive line as well. That time, just a big target and a first down. I was thinking of San Diego State had a quarterback that was pretty tall, and his brother wasn't a bad baseball player as well. Then you go to the Seahawks, Dan McGuire. He was about 6'10". <laughs> That's going to be an incomplete pass, probably just as well as Paul Jenkins was surrounded by Broncos. 5-16 remaining here in the third quarter. Broncos came out of the locker room on their first possession, popped it in, picking the football up, popping it in, making it 14 straight points. Problem is they've got a big hill to climb. Eric Crouton has his team up 42-14. Well, we got to find a way to stop this drive and, and hopefully hold them to no points so we can get our offense back out on the field. Rattay throws it up to the speedster who just runs under it in for another touchdown. Troy Edwards, and you think that they've overthrown the ball, and he just kind of puts on another gear and runs right under it almost. He's as good a college receiver as I think we're going to see. Broncos had 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. Everyone was up awfully close, and we'll see if Damon Schilling trying to recover and get the tackle on Edwards, but boy, this, he, he runs good patterns, he's fast, and look at the speed to accelerate past Schilling. Schilling was right there, but that speed is such an asset. 4-4 four, four speed, a 40-inch vertical leap, the guy can do it all. 
Of course, Gene, you made a good point. Hopefully, that'll be the last <laughs> players like that the Broncos are going to see this season. <laughs> Extra point is good, 49-14. Mr. Edwards uh, is kind of enjoying the day, and you think, wow, that's got to be a career high for him. Joe, that's not even close to his career high. No, he, he would still have to double his yardage to get his career high at 405 yards, which happens to be an NCAA mark, which, we, which he set in the first game of the season against Nebraska. It was a nice catch right off the fingertips by Edwards, and that's his fourth touchdown. Touchdown reception of the day. He is dangerous. Joe, how many yards did you say against Nebraska? <laughs> 405 yards. In fact, they took the gloves that he was wearing that day, and they're in the NCAA Hall of Fame right now. That's just incredible. It helps when you have touchdown receptions in that game of, of, of 80 yards, of 94 yards, and 52 yards in that game. It's awfully easy to gain that kind of yardage when you're scoring from that far away. And I guess uh, another thing is you're you're legit when you say I did it against Nebraska. Absolutely. So Louisiana Tech will kick the football off. Shenard Hartz is waiting deep for it. He'll run up to the 12-yard line, and that's where he'll follow the wedge, hopefully to a big opening as Hartz gets up to the 35-yard line. And that's where the Broncos will take over. Broncos have done a nice job on offense so far here in the second half. We'll see if they're able, able to keep that string going. See who's coming in at quarterback. Looks like we still have Nate Sparks, Dave. So Nate getting uh, the duration of uh, the third quarter calls today. We'd expect to see Bart Hendricks possibly in the fourth frame or even Brian Harson, depending on uh, what the scenario of the scoreboard reads. Brian Harson, the number three quarterback for the Broncos. That's Jim Brecky setting up to the other side of the line behind big Jermaine Bellin, and then Nate says, come over here. Chenard ran right into Nate Sparks, but he still manages to gobble up a couple of yards. Well, we had confusion on that play from the start. Uh, Jim Brecky wasn't exactly sure what he was doing. This play had disaster written all over it when they collide here, but Shenard Harts keeps going. Nice job not quitting on the play and getting a positive gain out of it. That one could have been a, a loss of three or four yards or even a, even more uh, dangerous, a fumble. Instead, they get a couple of yards. I think Shenard Harts is seeing stars right now because the official came over, stopped the clock, and says, hey, get number three off the field. So he must have got popped a little bit there on that play. Training staff coming out to check out Shinar. Aaron Hurley will come right back into the lineup. He is the tailback. And there you can see they're checking to see what day it is. A lot of it's heat exhaustion, too, as well. Sparks throws the football. Nelson, the intended receiver. And you have to be impressed with the play of Frederick Lewis. Three interceptions, and he's broken up a couple of plays as well. Of course, he definitely has the advantage in since he knows that the Broncos are going to be throwing that football just about every down. When talking with their athletic director at halftime, he said this is the best that their defensive backs have played all year. And uh, I mean, they're excited. This is homecoming for them. And like I said, they've struggled uh, this year. They had very high expectations at the start of the season and, and they've kind of been disappointed uh, up until today. But uh, uh, they're all on fire today. What are you doing for Halloween? How about Bronco football, the 31st? Oh, is this going to be a dandy? Nevada and the Broncos turn on Channel 6 for all the action. Saturday, the 31st, BSU in Nevada, the biggest little city in the world. Joe, I can't wait for that game. Yeah, all the, the ghouls and goblins will be out for that one. That one should be exciting, and it'll have, uh, it could have potential humanitarian bowl implications, much like last year's, human, uh, last year's Nevada BSU game did. Well, it was certainly a score fest at Broncos Stadium. As the Broncos came from behind in that contest to make it interesting, we have a timeout on the field. Nate Sparks talking with Coach Cutter. Nate Sparks came in uh, this contest just before the uh, end of the first quarter. Played most of the second frame. Bart Hendricks returned to the game. And this, as we said, has been the script that Coach Cutter told us on Wednesday that he would follow with. Today's Master Rooter fan of the game is brought to you by Master Rooter, master of the trade. 
happen to know our fan of the game is uh, a guy we rode with on the airplane, Harry Neff, who's the president. Or I should say Harry Neff. There he is. Harry, give us a little cheer. Play it up for us. You're the master rooter fan of the game. There we go. A wonderful man who sponsors the mainline dancers. Big Bronco booster, and he's our fan of the game. Sparks running to the midfield mark. Joe, I saw Hanky on the play. I don't think that's good news for BSU. No, it's thrown in that area where there was either a block in the back or there was some sort of offensive holding. Nate, though, demonstrating just how elusive he can be when he gets running upfield. One of his strengths. You know, we saw Harvey Neef, our uh, fan of the game. I I'll tell you what, nobody in this place, well, maybe next to Gene Blameyer, uh, wanted hit, wanted the Broncos to win this game. And he just, oh, you think we can do it? You think we can do it? And he was talking to us about the telecast on the airplane. And great to have guys like that aboard. Harvey, congratulations on being selected our fan of the game. Dave. During, what, the 2,000 miles? It's a long one. <laughs> It'll be a long, long plane ride back tonight as well. Dave, uh, Broncos have been looking the way of Corey Nelson on just about every pass play so far here in, in this uh, latter half of the, of the third quarter. Third and long. We'll see if they look the way of number 81 again or maybe a little Rodney Smith. Third and 22 to be exact is Sparks fires it up. He's got Corey out there. And Joe, we said... In fact, is yesterday after practice, we thought Corey Nelson was going to have a big game because so many times they went to him against Utah and they were just probably the length of the football away from having a couple of touchdowns for number 81. Sure, he would get the ball and he would try to spin and maybe just get his foot caught up so he'd lose his balance a little bit because once he gets into that open field and puts on those afterburners, he can be uh, just as dangerous speed-wise as uh, Edwards on the other side of the ball because he is, he's a sprinter. That's just his trade. So the Broncos will be forced to punt. You think back, Nate Sparks scrambling, getting enough for the first down, but the penalty bringing it all the way back, making it third and 22, the incomplete pass. And now Gonzalez will have to boot the ball from his 12. Doesn't get a very good kick, but it does take a Bronco bounce to about the 46-yard line, and that's where La Tech will come in. And quarterback Tim Rotek still at the, at the helm. Which is not a huge surprise. I don't think anybody here is surprised about that. Don't forget in the conclusion of this contest, we'll pick out the most significant play. We call it the play of the game brought to you by Snake River Yamaha, the Treasure Valley's Yamaha Superstore. You almost think uh, Rodney not having those knee pads at the right time. <laughs> look, at, look at those numbers. Oh, my. Rate, well, he's still he's still 100 yards off of his career best at 590 yards. Bobby Raytel finds an opening and picks up 11 yards. Bobby Raytel, well, probably a guy that's that's thinking, you know, I wish they'd give me the ball more often, but uh, in this offense, you're not going to see the tailback carry the pigskin too much. Well, he has seen a touchdown uh, so far in this game, and he had two against the Broncos last year, so he does see the end zone. This is what you're susceptible to when you're always looking to that defense or trying to defend that incredibly difficult pass attack. A quick hit like that right up the middle with a running play, it can sometimes be good for 10 yards. We're at the three minute mark of the third quarter. 49-14, Louisiana Tech with the lead. They had it throughout. And guess who they're going to? And guess who's wide open? And they're not going to catch him. Tack on another one. 43 yards for Troy Edwards. And Edwards is, is almost like a kid in the sandlot. You know, he's not getting the yardage that he had in that first game, but can you, you can count five touchdowns on all of your fingers and your thumb on one hand. This is incredible to have five touchdowns in a game. Edwards, you saw the speed once again. Sometimes you wonder, how can you defend a guy like this? You saw it. Dempsey Dees was right with him, but then the speed just separates Edwards from the defenders. Charles McMillan, who is the, the secondary coach, early in the season said, hey, our guys can stand up against anyone. Put Jerry Rice out there. Well, now I think he's going to say, hey, put Troy Edwards out there. That's a, a big challenge. Who would like to take Mr. Edwards on one-on-one? -on -one? Probably no one. He is a very, very good football player. All you have to do is blink, and he's in the end zone. You hear the bell gonging. That's their tradition here in uh, 
Louisiana Tech country ring that gong every time they get into the end zone. It's almost like a, it's music to Mr. Edwards' ears, but it's a, like a pin poking you in the back if you're a Bronco fan. At the beginning of each game, we bring you the injury report, and that is brought to you by St. Al's Life Flight. Call 1-800-574-9464 to join because it's your life. Well, Edwards, 10 receptions now, five touchdowns, so every other time he touches the ball, he's scampering it into the end zone. There's the bell. Is that the play of the game? <laughs> yeah. i tell you what, that guy's getting tired. Oh, no kidding. His arm is, he's building up the muscle tone in his arm by swinging that gong back and forth. Well, we knew Tech was a very good football team offensively, but Joe, and talking to some of our colleagues, uh, whether it be television, uh, print, radio, I think everybody was stunned by this. You know, they, they were saying possibly they weren't as good as everybody thought because they hadn't won as many games. Speaking of speedsters, Ross Ferris takes the football up to the 31-yard line. Some of those who cover Louisiana Tech, they were talking at the beginning of the season that that Nebraska game may have hurt them a little bit yeah. because they got so much notoriety for their offense that when they came in, their very next game was a home game against Central Florida. Their offense couldn't get on track. So we are at the 247 mark of the third quarter, and Bart Hendricks will return. Of course, this is nothing. Nate has not made, I mean, in the sense, made mistakes that would make Coach yank him out. This is how it was scripted. Coach mm -hmm. Cutter said, I'm going with two quarterbacks throughout this contest. So Hendricks is at the helm. Shenard Hartz is the tailback. Number three will take the football, try and turn the corner. And he takes a vicious hit. Rodney Smith uh, right in front of the Bronco bench getting into it with a couple of Louisiana Tech football players. Rodney getting right back up from that. He saw he left the, the game seeing stars. I was surprised he got up from that one not seeing stars as uh, boy it was Nathan Darby just laying the pop on top of Shenard Hartz. Ron Pound looks like he can uh, let's see number 44 as he gets into his line. Looks like he look at him limping there Joe. See, Ron Pound is uh, hurting a little bit, but uh, you're not going to take him out of the lineup, at least not on this play. Second and 10. Hendricks with uh, a lot of time trying to get out of trouble. So Hendricks will go down after picking up a couple of yards. and It'll be third down and long. Well, we're taking a look at Pound and, and how he's possibly injured, and now you're taking a look at, at Bart and you see a running play like that in a game that's 56 to 14. I think you'd rather see Bart just take a seat and try to keep him healthy. He gained three yards out of it. Admirable, but uh, you don't want him to get hurt. Of course, it's difficult. Uh, both those guys literally competing for the spot of quarterback, the number one slot. He probably doesn't want to slide. He wants to get the first down. Henrik steps up, fires it to Corey Nelson, and Nelson will not even get close to the first down marker. Tech's defense has played great in this ball game. Obviously, they have the advantage here, knowing that the Broncos are going to pass the football. That front will just rush. You drop a few guys back. Pretty difficult to move on them right now. Right. Well, the Broncos, uh, in their halftime adjustments, obviously saw something uh, along the lines of Corey Nelson getting open because they've been looking Corey's way all through this third quarter. This time, uh, it didn't work. Gonzalez to boot the football from his 25. Gets a fabulous kick. And they will spot that at the, in the official this time, going back the other way. And it'll be at the 26-yard line. Dave Tester along with Joe Hughes, hoping you're enjoying this contest on Channel 6. If you're a Bronco fan, you say, you know what, I'm glad it's on TV, but I'm not enjoying the score right now. <laughs> right. This Louisiana Tech school, they were looking at, they were talking bowl bid at the beginning of the season because they knew what kind of off, they were 9-2 and two last year, felt they were overlooked. They knew they had much of their offense coming back. Rate was just a sophomore last year, just a junior this year. They knew the kind of offensive firepower they had coming in, but with a 1-4 and four start, that bowl bid talk had gone away. But I tell you what, they've got all the confidence in the world now, leading 56-14. With 39 clicks on the clock, we want to thank Thompson's Maytag for our game clock, the dependability place for all your home appliances. Got an injured player right now, right at the midfield mark is what the stoppage is in play. That's Daniel Willis. 
course, a lot of what we believe the players are going down for just the fatigue factor. Uh, we were talking to Senator Joey Horvat, who had about a two-gallon bottle of Gatorade or Powerade. Mm -hmm. said, the trainers, everybody told us, load up on fluids before this game. Right, and they were doing it from last night clear into today just so because they knew they could. Uh, a guy who's 300 pounds out there, as we were talking about on the flight over, Dave, could lose 10 pounds in a game like this. Bobby Raytel carrying the football. And at the 30-second uh, mark, there is a change. Wes Pate is in at quarterback. And uh, we think that's the last of Tim Rattay. Wes Pate is a redshirt freshman. He's played three games this season. Uh, we understand, very intelligent guy. And get this, Joe, he's got a strong arm. Oh, <laughs> really? In the Louisiana Tech scheme <laughs> of things? Well, look at the guns on that guy. Two for eight, 22 yards so far this season, and a touchdown, so half of his completions have been for scores. So Wesley Pate will let the clock run down. He says, you know what, the fourth quarter will be mine. Broncos trailing 56-14 as we go into the last 15 minutes. He's talking to you, Dave. What? Jerry's talking to you. He doesn't have his headphones on. Yeah, Jerry, I hear you. What's going on? What? What play was. Oh, do we have a play in the first half? What are you saying, Jerry? Oh, good luck. <laughs> What, the bell ringer? <laughs> uh, check the stats on Corey, 81. Um, yeah, check on 81. How about, how about Ron Pounds or Seth? I mean, I don't know. He has? No, I don't think he's caught a single ball. He's caught one ball and ran two times. I think Corey Nelson has how about, the best uh, stats. How about Bell Castro setting the record? <laughs> we don't have that on tape. We missed that extra point that set the record. I think. Jerry, do you have that? Yeah, we didn't have that extra point. It was the first, uh, well, it would be the Broncos' first touchdown. We didn't have it on air. Go back right after their very first touchdown. Beginning of the second half. Uh, they jumped on BSU early, and they have not uh, let up. New quarterback in for Louisiana Tech. West Pate does have a strong arm. Uh, looking uh, like he can throw it down the field. Stephen Hampton, the intended receiver. Which brings me to the question, do you think we'll see Brian Harson in this game? Oh, I think man from Capital High School. Yeah, I think there's a, a very distinct possibility that Brian Harson will, will get uh, some snaps. Just, just to get him in a game situation. He's played before, but uh, just this season, get him in a game situation. The outcome of this one is not in doubt at 56 to 14. It also keeps Bart and Nate on the sidelines where they're at least not gonna get hurt going to the conference season. Pate out of the shotgun. Well, he's not gonna hand it off. As it uh, ruled incomplete, David Newman, big tight end, trying to gather it in, could not do that. And it's a fourth down, sending on the punt team. Dave, isn't, isn't it interesting how a quarterback in the Louisiana Tech system, their base set isn't like a lot of teams, maybe a T formation, maybe an I formation. You work out of the shotgun. You come to Louisiana Tech and you learn out, well, my base set is the shotgun formation. I know the defensive coaches weren't uh, too excited about that base set. As Tony Mamerill sprints up to the 27, Mamerill has some running room. And he gets the football up to the 38-yard line. So the Broncos will have the football there. Trying to get uh, something going. 
That is a scoring fest, Dave. Box score, I guess we'll call that. <laughs> Boy, what a powerful first two quarters that just set the Broncos back on their heels. Broncos come out responding with 14 straight in the third quarter, answered by 14 more in Louisiana Tech. So Bart Hendricks at the helm, Brad Arbin, and Shannon Hart to the backfield. Pull back and a half back, little play action. Hendricks steps up, gets it off, and complete. So the Broncos keeping things going as Shea Swan gets some action. He's a 5'11 sophomore from uh, Jerome. Jerome, I know. A lot of Idaho boys getting some play, some uh, offensive play. Ron Pound from Weezer. We've seen Ross Ferris from Glens Ferry. And now Shea Swan. I think that's the first time we've called his number receiving the ball this season. Swan number 39, just kind of a swing pass out there, sort of a safety valve uh, play that is. Some of the other receivers aren't open downfield, so toss it out to the fullback and Swan and a good five yard gain. Another injured Louisiana Tech player. Let's see if we can get a number on him. Louisiana Tech having the same sort of uh, situation injury-wise as the Broncos, leading 56 to 14. They don't want to see any of their players hurt for the rest of the season as well. Of course, Louisiana Tech being an independent team, they don't have a conference season to speak of, where the Broncos, they want to make sure they have all their guns set for Big West Conference schedule, which begins next week. Broncos at home, ready to take on North Texas. They'll have to regroup after this one. Well, it looks like Michael Boone is going to be okay. They were checking his leg out. Probably scared him just a little bit. So Boone was a backup. We'll uh, wander over to the tech sidelines. Broncos will be hopping on a charter flight right after this game, expecting to be back in Boise early in the morning, about 1 a.m. And then, of course, they work out on Sundays. Monday is the off day as they get ready to take on, I don't know, should we call them the Eagles or the Mean Green? <laughs> Trying to change their mascot. I guess since Mean Joe Green played there. Maybe Mean Green's the way to go. Shenard Hart's trying to get mean and get a first down. Most of the offensive starters still in the game for the Broncos. We're working on some of the, the running schemes. They don't want to show too much because they know North Texas will be looking at this tape preparing for, for next week's game. But Shenard Hart's running hard. Of course, Joe, uh, Coach Cutter is... Uh, I don't know whether we'd call him Steven Spielberg of game films, but he breaks <laughs> them all down. His library is amazing. In fact, he, he told us that he still has it. He hasn't looked at it, but he still has a tape that Gary Croton gave him when he became the Boston College quarterbacks coach. Croton handed it off to him and said, here's how we do offense at BC. Hendricks fires it. Complete to Ron Powell. A pounder playing the role of a player of the game, or at least work, working to get that. <laughs> oh, certainly. He has made some big plays in this game, and he's been one of the one of the few bright spots for the Broncos. Ron Pound, number 44. He's a 6'2", 246-pound senior out of Weezer, Idaho. A little play action. Look for the, he's called the H-back, kind of like a tight end. Wide open again. He was like that in the first half. He gets that little out pattern, and no one's even near him until he's well downfield past the first down marker. At the 13-20 mark of the fourth quarter, 56-14, Louisiana Tech with the lead. The Broncos trying to get it into the end zone. Corey Nelson going down and making the grab, picking up 11 yards and another first down. That was a nice throw by Bart Hendricks that time. That's a timing pattern, and before Nelson even makes the cut, the ball is in the air. Here we go. Bart's looking the way of Corey Nelson, and now Nelson hasn't even made his cut yet before Bart throws the ball, and Nelson turns around, and boom, it's right there. He almost didn't have enough time to see it coming in, but it was right there, pinpoint pass by Bart. Antoine Wilson and Tony Mamerill are the receivers in this package. Tony's to the top of your screen. Wilson's to the bottom. Little delay to Shenard Hartz. Not much running room there. 
Desmond Nunnery, D Nun, they call him. You'd think a guy with a, a name like that, big old mean linebacker. <laughs> Uh, he's a double E major. Electrical engineering is his specialty. <laughs> All right, he's got a looks to be making a, a good living for himself when he graduates from Louisiana Tech. So a pickup of one for Hearts is he's joined now in the backfield by Aaron Hurley. Split backfield. They'll dump it off to Hearts. He's got the big, big bodies in front of him, but someone forgot to make a block there, Joe. Yeah, in fact, that play was one block away from getting good yardage. They had Antoine Wilson split out just a bit off of the line on the right side and pulled him across the middle of the field to draw the defense towards the middle of the field and swing that screen pass out there to Shenard Hartz. But it, like you, you saw, one blue jersey, one man that was missed, and that just yeah. threw the whole play into array. Quincy Stewart, the leading tackler on this team, coming up to make the stop. He was the one guy that they needed to block. So it is third down and nine. Corey Dilson in motion. Hendricks again firing it. And I think that one hopped off the turf. Antoine's going to argue, but uh, I think the replay, I believe the replay, will show that that, uh, that one hopped off the turf. I think Hendricks was just wishing he had that play back as it left his left his hand and because you will see here comes the ball Antoine's going down try to scoop it up and there's the one hop you see the ball touching the ground just before it gets to the hands of Wilson which means it's incomplete and Wilson was open on that play Broncos need to get the football to the 11 yard line uh, they have it on the 20. They're going to go up for six. Corey Nelson. Oh, there'll be a flag because Corey was going to make that catch. And did you see the corner just kind of grabbed his arm and pulled him down? Well, it was either that or touchdown. Yeah. So if you, <laughs> if you look at the alternative, maybe that wasn't such a bad play by Pernetter. But uh, this was a perfect pass by Hendricks. And it's nice to see him getting a little bit more confidence back because if that interference isn't called, that is a touchdown. <laughs> look, at even, even falling down, the ball hit hit Corey right in the shoulder pad. It isolated here. We'll take a look at the route that Corey Nelson runs. He sees it. The Burnett had already jumping up in the air before the ball gets there. And yes, that would have been six points had he not made the interference. We told you Roderick Burnett is a, a sophomore that is uh, he's young, but he has all the talent in the world. And they did not work on him this game. They stayed away from him. Who they did go to work on was Frederick Lewis. And that turned out to backfire as he picks the ball off three times. Right. Yeah. And that it, one interesting thing about that Pernetter from last year, he was the starting cornerback from a year ago. He made 30 tackles last year. All of them were unassisted. So he was always out on the island against a receiver. And when he made the tackle, he was the only one out there. Is that why he has jersey number 30 on that, Joe? Yeah, it was a good number for him Sounds last year. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> Chenard is the single setback. Broncos uh, first and goal. It's at the four. Hartz try to turn the corner. He's got room. And the official says no. One yard line is where he went out of bounds. Here we go. Shenard Hartz is going to try this right side. It's looking for the end zone. He doesn't have too far to go. Reading his block, you see number 79, Keith Dilworth, and his sore ankle trying to close off uh, the defensive end, but it's the corner that comes up and pushes it, forces him out of bounds. You see, he was even trying to throw the ball at the cone or the pylon there, trying to make, a, make it look like a touchdown. Nice effort by Shenard. Jay Swan is open. They throw it. Jeff puts here his second touchdown off the ricochet. Well, he had his first a couple of nights ago, or I should say a couple of games ago, and now Mr. Putz here from Eagle High School has his second to put in the bag. Hey, we haven't heard anything from Eagle, Idaho today, so this time, you know, we were looking the way of Shea Swan from Jerome, who was open, but look, the little tip pass, and then Putz here just keeping his eye on the ball. Great concentration for the freshman from Eagle coming down with a the touchdown. They are expecting big things from Jeb. Castro to attempt the extra point. Todd Bill Castro with the extra point attempt. Good. It's good. So Bell Castro continues to set the record. 56 21. We'll be back to Louisiana after this.
coverage plan. New quarterback in the game, though. Brian Stallworth, as you see, has played in two games this year. The redshirt freshman. Looks like he's got a pretty good arm as well. He can run well. He's the most athletic quarterback, we're told, on the squad of the three. He's the guy that uh, he'll tuck the football up and run whatever it takes. So a multi-dimensional quarterback, a little bit different than the other freshman that we saw in there. We're told he has a little bit more of a strong arm, but this one looks uh, stalwart. Looks like he's just set to break out and run the ball just as quickly as he is to throw it. A couple of Big West scores. Arkansas State over New Mexico State, 34-31. That one uh, going to overtime. Arkansas State winning it, and the University of Idaho up on Idaho State early on, 14-3. As the pass is complete to James Jordan. Tonight, Oregon State is in Logan to take on Utah State. Of course, uh, Utah State three weeks down the road. The Broncos will be at home for three consecutive games. Next week, it's North Texas coming to town, followed by Weber State and then Utah State. Dave Arslanian, in his first season at the helm. Interesting that you play Weber State. That's where Dave Arslanian's oh, wow. coached for a number of years. And then Utah State, where Coach Arslanian is now. Weber State having a pretty good season early on in the Big Sky Conference. Oh, absolutely. Well, and here's an interesting call. Fourth down. Look like uh, Louisiana Tech is all set to go for it. 56 to 21 is the score. They, they're not quite sure. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll step aside. 56-21. Tech with the lead. They've had it throughout. On fourth down and one. And I had a feeling they were going to try to see if they could get the Broncos to jump offside. The way they jumped off, though, maybe someone from La Tech convinced them to do that. And I think that is the case, and Tech will come out and punt the football. I thought I saw the center actually flinch on there, which is illegal for the, even if he just sort of strengthens his grip on the ball just so that the guys who are right around the ball, the defensive linemen who, are, who their faces are right near the ball, they see that flinch. And a lot of times that'll be the call. Now, Joe, didn't you think they would punt the football here? Oh, sure. Well, they're going to go unless they've got a quick kick. Now, we say most athletic player, Brian Stallworth, yeah. he may just quick kick the ball. Well, quick kick, he's going to pass it. Not that it's so bizarre to go for it on fourth down, but when you look at the scoreboard, 56-21, maybe something about the onside kick, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, regardless, the Broncos will have the football first and 10. I don't think there, there's any animosity. In fact, the coach Cutter would be the first to tell us that that man with the headset on there uh, played a pretty big role in getting him the job at Boston College as the offensive coordinator. He's certainly considered one of the better offensive minds in the, the game of football today. Everyone was so surprised to see a one and four start from this offensive squad. Nate Sparks back at the helm. Gets it off to Nate Colbert. Big 99 who's already returned to kickoff. Uh, comes in and makes the grab right there. Boy, try to bring down Nate Colbert. 6'2", 231 pound junior. He's a big target. Get him the ball, and he's just like a locomotive out there. He's going to take generally one or two <laughs> guys to yank him down. Nate on the rollout. Looks deep. Throws shallow. Corey Nelson cannot hang on to the football. That time, Nelson sort of doing a, a backward somersault going out of bounds and just couldn't keep the grasp on, on the ball. You'll notice that the entire field now is covered in shade. It's been wet out there at least uh, through most of the morning with all the rain. No danger of it freezing up, though, Joe. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We were yeah, asking. We understand why. it was cold at home. Right. But uh, my friend here, it is about, uh, well, it wasn't quite 90 degrees today, but it uh, felt like 110 with the humidity. Absolutely. When we got off the plane yesterday, oh, boy. Aaron Hurley running under the screen play, gets it up to the 38-yard line. So Aaron Hurley keeps on keeping on at the 855 mark of the fourth frame, 56-21. He to keep reading that score, Joe. Knocked the wind out of him. Took him a good 15, 20 seconds to get up after that. And there were three Louisiana Tech defenders to take down old Aaron Hurley. And Aaron Hurley put the hurt on them. So Hurley getting the first down. Sparks again will hang it up. And there's Nate Colbert. 99 says, hey, give me the rock and I'll go up and over. 
When he went up there, I thought he was 66 <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> It looked like Brent Jones uh, from San Francisco 49ers. I've seen him make a couple of plays like that where um, you catch the ball and they're going to take your legs out and you just keep that momentum going forward and you're going to do a little flip. <laughs> we'll see if we see 99. There's the 66. <laughs> and then back to 99 again. <laughs> so Nate picking up four yards. Nate to Nate. Sparks to Colbert. Broncos trying to get one more in the end zone here. Option sparks off to Hurley. Of course, again, uh, you like to say that. I don't know if you like to say it, but it's still scary to see Nate Sparks running the option. Timing on that one was was good on Sparks' part. He just got rid of the football, but that what that means is he's going to get hit as soon as he gets rid of it. Joe, explain the option and how that works. How you let the defensive end or that outside backer go? Well, the defensive end or the outside linebacker really decides the option. If the if the defensive end or linebacker comes up and goes to sack or or tackle, I'd rather the quarterback, then he's going to pitch it. If they pull back and try to guard the running back, then the then the quarterback's going to turn up field. The danger is you get a free shot on the quarterback back every time regardless this time Corey hangs on to the football and gets enough for the first down he's hurt a little bit though Corey's going to get back up and probably hustle over to the sidelines I think he is there he goes yeah there he goes Broncos have a nice little drive going here. They're, they're doing some of the things that uh, Louisiana Tech does. Little passes just underneath the coverage. See what their players can do with the ball once they get it. Just getting a first down here and there. Good ball control for the Broncos. Sparks on the rollout. Completes it. And Rodney is going to tiptoe along and get it up to the six-yard line. First time we've called Rodney Smith's number for quite a while. Well, yeah, quite a while here in the second half. Rodney, there's no quit in Rodney or the Broncos or Nate. They are, they're, they have pride on the line. They're going to try and poke another one into the end zone, even though the score is still awfully lopsided. It's pride they're playing for now. Joe, they're still sticking with the what they call the red ball offense. That's the, the no huddle look. Boom, boom, Bill Castro thinking, okay, if they get it in, uh, I'm going to be trying to kick it's the onside kick. Only this time he wants it to roll 10 yards. Incomplete pass, but there is a flag, and I believe somebody uh, got their hands around. I think they got around Antoine Wilson. Yeah, in fact, Antoine Wilson was shaking his head. He was agreeing with the official <laughs> because he knew the call was coming his way. Did you think he was going to disagree with him? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if they were going to make the call because it looked like the ball would not have been catchable, but the offense wasn't a pass interference type of thing. It was holding, and regardless whether the ball is catchable or not, you can't hold the players when they're running a pattern. We want to thank our crew for this game. They have been all over the country. We were in Salt Lake last week in Louisiana. Howard Zuckerman and the gang. Our producer, Jerry Long. As always, guys, doing a great job. And uh, they'll be back at it again. Halloween. I wonder if they're going to dress up for that game. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to dress up. Speaking of Antoine Wilson, that reminds me of uh, before he got on the bus last week to go to Utah, putting on a Halloween mask and going up to Coach Cutter saying, I don't, I don't feel so good. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Coach telling us that story of Monday. BAA luncheon. Of course, that's at Boise State University every Monday at noon. Antoine Wilson was one of the speakers last Monday, and he just showed how he's very he's a very respectful and, and, and well-spoken individual, that yet you get him on the sidelines against uh, some of these other teams, and it can, he can be very confident and, and almost cocky, but it, he really balances that out well. He, he, he tempers his cockiness with respect. I asked him... Uh, early on Friday morning if he brought another mask or a prank. So you got to do that for good luck. So hopefully he'll do that before North Texas next week. Broncos faced with a first and goal going up for Nate Colbert. Did he stay in? Well, I thought Nate maybe got shoved out um, hanging on to the football. But it would have been great to see Nate. He made all those catches and then to bring down the touchdown. Having fun watching Big 99 do his thing. Oh, sure. And he certainly comes out of, lands out of bounds. You'll see both of his knees on this play landing full in the white. But it's his momentum. Well, he didn't hang out of the football. Yeah. So, because I was thinking that the, the corner kind of shoved him out there. But he did not hang out of the football. 
but was all academic. Second and goal for BSU, Aaron Hurley, tailback. Nate says I'm going in. So Sparks gets the touchdown to make it 56-26. Or I should say 56-27. Like Dave, don't short us a point right now. <laughs> yeah, that's all they need is to be short one. Nate is second touchdown of the game, running that little option again. Nate not afraid to just bury his head and pull forward. He sees the opening right there along the side of Keith Dilworth. Dilworth sealed off the uh, Oh, I thought for a minute that Bell Castro streak was coming right, right in, but instead he pushes it to 61 in a row without a miss. He is the record breaker, hoping to do it on a, on a more happy circumstances, but not the case. Broncos just punching it in. We'll be back in the final six minutes after this. This one is to get it to bounce way up in the air. Not the case. Angelosi gobbling it up. I don't know. I kind of like the last onside <laughs> kick play that they were. A little ran. dribbler. Yeah. That one you'll you'll get that big bounce a lot more on the, the Astro turf at Broncos Stadium than you do the softer natural turf here. Bermuda grass, I guess it is. And, and Joe during practice yesterday, the boom boom was uh, bouncing those off the turf, but maybe just a little bit of that moisture that they had this morning made it so that ball would not bounce quite like it did yesterday at practice. Good call, though. I mean, they're, they're, they're continuing that aggressive theme of trying to get that ball back. So Louisiana Tech with the football, keeping it on the ground, and uh, Bobby Raytel has uh, done his duty for the day. And Jason Owens, a freshman, is in the lineup. There's a good look at uh, Mr. Owens. And they've gone back to Wesley Pate as the quarterback. So Brian Stallwer saw some of his time. Now they're going to work on Pate's skills a little bit more. Pate says this is my place right now. 56, 28, clock counting down as you can see. The five and a half minute mark. Tech came out uh, right from the uh, the get go. The opening kickoff marched at the length of the football field, and uh, Broncos trying to answer back before we do it. Joe it was 21 to nothing. Boy, and the big play right out of the gate was a long pass to Troy Edwards. They almost got him in the end zone. It didn't matter that he didn't get in the end zone there because he would find the end zone five more times in the contest, which ended up uh, we're being told now is a uh, is a record for Louisiana Tech. Five touchdowns in the game actually ties a record set by a Chad Mackey in uh, 1996. Well, I know Terry Bradshaw, who is probably the most famous uh, Louisiana Tech graduate, uh, was at that Nebraska game. But I, I think uh, Mr. Bradshaw was thinking to himself, uh, when I was playing, we never did this. We didn't throw the ball like that. Even though I think he would have fit into the offense nicely. Oh, sure. An interesting statistic as well is we look at Bart Hendricks last week had an, had an awfully good game against Utah throwing for 240 yards. Tim Rattay with Louisiana Tech has not thrown for less than 269 yards in a game this year. In, in fact, if he throws for less than 350 yards, it's an off night. Well, think about what the Wyoming coaches said last week. Holding them under 500 is like holding most teams under 200. Yeah. This team losing last week in Laramie. There's another flag on the field. Would you like a chance to win 10,000 bucks? Joe, you're not eligible, but you are at home. Just come to a Bronco home game and you could be chosen at random for a chance to play. Pass for cash at halftime. We almost had a winner in that very first game. You could be next. Pass for cash at all the Bronco home games brought to you by Channel 6 ABC and AirTouch Cellular. Joe had a lot of fans <laughs> say, Dave, pick my name. Pick my name for that. Well, we are trying. And don't forget uh, this Saturday against North Texas. Chance for you at halftime to go for the 10,000 in cash. Just don't leave it short. Back to pass. And getting this one off complete and a touchdown. 
Stephen Hampton, as West Payton was just drilled into the ground. I don't know how he got that one off. And Hampton just ran under it 48 yards for the touchdown. I think Payton was just getting rid of that one just to save his life. Although it didn't do much good because he still gets hammered. Look at the pressure coming from both sides of Payton. Both sides converge at once. He was able to get the ball off. And here's the hometown boy, Steve Hampton, a local from Ruston, Louisiana, just runs underneath it, gets behind the coverage, and another long touchdown for Louisiana Tech. Hampton, who was on the baseball team a year ago, hits the homer. The extra point is good, but there is a flag on the field. Not that it will matter at this stage, 62-28. But we will find out what the infraction is, whether it be against Louisiana Tech or the Broncos, and where exactly it will be marked off. This stage, you might want to say, let's just decline that thing. <laughs> but uh, I think with the motion, you'll have to come out and kick it again, whether you like it or not. We're getting to a point in the game now, Dave, where I think they're nearing the most points ever scored against Boise State with 62 points in this game. I know that outdoes the Washington State game from a year ago when they scored 58. So we'll move this one back uh, five yards. The extra point from the 15 makes it a 25-yard shot. Same result, 62-28. Today's WorkCast Northwest Player of the Game is brought to you by WorkCare Northwest, today's solution for workers' compensation risks. Joe, what about our uh, Player of the Game? Player of the Game is the Weezer senior, Ron Pound, who did an awfully nice job getting himself open. He had three, three receptions for 55 yards. An excellent game for Ron. When he saw the ball, he came down with it. Here's a look at one of his receptions. Big number 44 making Weezer proud in this particular game, getting himself wide open and then rumbling, tumbling for good yardage in this game for the big pounder. Congratulations to Ron Fowler, player of the game. 63-28, Broncos back with the football as Louisiana Tech gets set to kick it off. I told you the BSU players will be loading up on the bus. It's about a 45-minute drive from our location to the airport. And load up and uh, take off on the charter, which uh, I might add only took two and a half hours to get here, but uh, something, as Bob Anthony can explain during our newscast tonight, that jet stream. When you're not in the jet stream, it takes a lot longer to get home. Ross Ferris. Glenn's Ferry pilot, if you will, gets up to the 25. You know, we've seen Ross back there a number of times. Keep waiting for him just to, to break one of those loops. Speed is such a weapon on the football field, as we've certainly seen demonstrated tonight by Troy Edwards. Today's play of the game is brought to you by Snake River Yamaha, the Treasure Valley's Yamaha Superstore. And this was kind of a fun play of the game. Sure was. Nice to see Jeb Putz here getting his second touchdown as a Bronco, and it was great concentration by Jeb to come down with touchdown number two for Mr. Putz here. Well, thank you, folks. Snake River Yamaha for the play of the game. Tap off the defender and the heads-up catch. As uh, Brian Harson in the lineup off to Shenard Hartz. And Hartz will rumble out of bounds to stop the clock. Uh, just before getting to the uh, first yard marker, he'll be a first down marker. He'll be about two yards shy. Of course, uh, Brian Harson has not played uh, a lot this season. His uh, numbers, uh, he's thrown the football twice. Now that was his third time on the season, first completion. The junior capital quarterback from Boise has a lot of arm strength. Famous or infamous, I guess, for being the uh, quarterback that followed Jake Plummer. Tough, tough shoes to fill, but he did a fine job at Capitol High School filling those shoes. And Harson, Coach Cutter was very, um, I'll point it out through us all season long, all preseason long, that it wasn't just Hart, it wasn't just Bart Hendricks and Nate Sparks. Harson was in the mix. He was competing for that starting job, and he was always impressed, Coach Cutter was, with the way Harson was competing. The late Pokey Allen always told me, I like this Brian Harson. He is a competitor, and you know what? He may have the strongest arm on the football field. As Harson runs option. So coach says, hey, if you're going to be out there, you got to take the same hits that the first stringers do. 
And Arson trying to get the uh, first down. Joe, tell us a little bit uh, about the guy that's coming up next year, B.J. Rohde, the, the redshirt freshman. And to, I guess tell us about his coaching background, his head coach. Well, B.J. Rohde is coming out of uh, Springfield, Oregon, and he's a tall kid. He throws a nice ball. We've seen him uh, throwing the ball around practice. And here goes Harson again to Rodney. I think he one-hopped it. Has really been played. So the incomplete pass will make it second down and 10. Well, I was thinking there was a former Oregon great, Chris Miller, or one of those guys in there, a quarterback that uh, had seen B.J. play and uh, thought he was a pretty, pretty good prospect. Chris Miller would certainly know a good quarterback when he saw one, and B.J. Rohde, he's got a good stature. He stands around 6'5", and uh, looks like the quarterback of the future for the Broncos. Not sure who Brian Harson was looking for there. Nate Colbert had turned his route off short. Corey Delson was running it long, and the ball ended up in the middle there. That's what Coach Cutter is discussing right now. Yeah, I think he was looking the way of, of Nate Colbert. He's just, Brian has not seen a lot of snaps, and we were just talking about that strong arm. That strong arm just gunned it over the top of Colbert. So maybe surprising Harson just how hard he can throw that ball. So to bring up a third down and 10, the Broncos trying to move it up to the 45, and Antoine cannot hang on to the football. I think he actually thought he had it there for a moment. Yeah, it was a it was a mildly difficult catch to try and make. Coach Cutter's still calling all the plays for even when the second and third stringers in there. Antoine Wilson, a good effort. Coach taking off the headset and saying, "Well, I'm just about ready to call this one tonight." And Start taking a look at game film and try and figure, regroup and figure out what happened. Mr. Gonzalez probably uh, disappointed that he goes, hey, wait a minute, Dave, I I'm the player of the game. I've been a busy man out here. Oh, he sure has. He has spent a lot of time on the football field. on Channel 6. Get a pinpoint weather forecast from the newest member of our news team, meteorologist Jim Duthie, for a weather forecast that is easy to understand. Watch weekday nights on Channel 6 News. Joined by our uh, Don Nelson and Claudia Weatherman. And Jim was most helpful this week, not only to us, but to the Bronco coaching staff, keeping us uh, posted on the weather. Jimmy, uh, you hit it right on the head. Needed him to predict victory, though. <laughs> Yeah, so if his forecasting's that good, now we need him to, to work on scores a little bit. No rusted Louisiana was right on the edge of a severe thunderstorm watch clear until about noon today, and they were seeing a lot of that rain through the night and uh, up until we got, a, got in the vehicle to drive over here. It was still raining awfully hard. Speaking of our weather team, I know our Bob Anthony was uh, a little nervous for us, uh, leaving a note. He goes, uh, be careful, uh, there's some tornadoes, there's hurricanes, the whole works out there. Yeah, this is certainly a, a weather central out here in the Louisiana and the Gulf Coast area. Well, this will go down in the books for the Broncos as a loss. They will fall to three and two. Of course, next week is the first league game of the season for the Broncos as they get ready to take on North Texas on the blue. That contest will kick off at 7 o'clock at Broncos Stadium. Louisiana Tech will take on Northeast Louisiana, which is just down the road. Second down and nine. Tech still passing the football. And trying to... Let at least some of these backups anyway, Joe, uh, find out what it's all about. Jeff Coop getting in there. I think Jeff didn't realize how close he was to getting an interception here. And if he actually comes down with that ball, he might even have had a touchdown. He just puts his hands up and, whoa, it's right there. Jeff Cobb out of Idaho Falls, Idaho. So a lot of the, the local athletes for Boise State from the, the homegrown boys from Idaho seen a lot of play. Louisiana Tech game. 
Tech still throwing the football. Of course, that is their offense. And Joe, as you said, the hometown guy, Stevie Hampton, uh, getting enough. No, the back official says he's about a yard shy of the first down. You see Hampton's reaction. Didn't like that too well. He's looking for a hometown call. Say, hey, I've got as many hometown fans here as anybody. Homecoming here in Ruston, Louisiana. They're having fun in this one. It is homecoming. I have to admit, we did not see Carl Malone. We did not see uh, Terry Bradshaw. David Segui, who is the first baseman for the Seattle Mariners, played here. Of course, my favorite players. Uh, it's a group, Joe, I don't know if you've heard of Brooks and Dunn before, but Kix Brooks is a graduate here. <laughs> Joe has to put up with my country music on the road. Hey, it's, it's all right. Also, a couple of kickers coming out of Louisiana Tech and the likes of Chris Boniol and Matt Stover doing their kicking duties in the NFL now. Of course, even if we talk about all those players, I think what Louisiana Tech is most known for is its women's basketball team. The Lady Texters with uh, three national champion titles and uh, the Coliseum right behind us, our location, you can see, uh, with the exception of the big Carl Malone set up there where they have all his jersey numbers and whatnot, uh, they're thinking hoop all the way, a women's hoop. Well, yeah, they packed that 8,000 seat assembly hall to see the Lady Texters. Ryan Arson would like to uh, get into the scorebook. Jeb puts here uh, the intended receiver. Traditionally, these games are in the evening, the home games. That is, we understand, with the exception of homecoming. Of course, uh, I don't think uh, it wouldn't matter what time you played this ball game. Tech came out ready to roll. Don't forget, uh, we'll be in the biggest little city in the world the end of the month as Nevada takes on a Boise State right here on Channel 6, your home of Bronco Sports. Don't forget tomorrow night at 1020, Joe Hughes and myself bringing you Bronco Sports with you, Coach Dirk Cutter. And Rodney Smith takes a vicious pop right along the sidelines. Ouch, we don't want to see Rodney limping out of this one. Rodney's been an exceptional player for two years running now for the Broncos. Well, Coach certainly hasn't taken the A-team out of there. Speaking of the A-team, did this guy have a marvelous game or what? Tim Rote, the, the junior, came into this game with over 2,000 yards passing. Get close to 3,000 already. Arson on the rollout. Felt like a roll after that play. Dave, we were talking Tim Rattay. They've handed us some statistics about him today. He's thrown over 300 yards in 11 of his last 12 games in the last three, and he's thrown a touchdown in all but one of 17 career starts. This game is his fourth 500-yard pass. I imagine the coaching staff is glad that uh, Mr. Rattay, his dad, made that phone call when he was in junior college looking for a four-year school for him to play out of Arizona. A lot of coaches probably wish they said, hey, uh, Dad, here's my phone number. <laughs> Gonzalez with the boot. And that will, wherever he goes down, will be the end of the football game. As it goes down to the victory books for Louisiana Tech, the final 63 to 28. The Broncos uh, losing on the road, but Joe, I think more than anything, uh, they had a wonderful showing in the second half, BSU did, and they could have just came out uh, and rolled over. Right, I think the key was, uh, Gene Blameyer touched on this when he was up with us in the third quarter, was providing something to build on for, this, for going into the conference season. Did they, did they roll over and die, or did they come out and fight? Well, the Broncos came out fighting. You could tell by the way they scored 14 points right out of the gate in the second or in the third quarter and uh, stuck to their game plan, tried each quarterback in there, and just to see who was going to move the team down the field, and they played well in the second half, much better than the first. So the Broncos now get ready to open up Big West Conference play against uh, North Texas. That will be on Saturday on the blue at 7 o'clock BSU trying to rebound after this loss, taking on North Texas. Head coach uh, Dirk Cutter, coach, we were wishing we could have talked to you under uh, better circumstances, a disappointing loss, but at the same time, your guys could have rolled over, but I think in the second half, they came out and played football. What'd you tell the guys in the locker room? Uh, we just talked about trying to play better in the second half. 
you know, that was about as bad as you could play in the first half, but we just tried to come back and start over from scratch and uh, try to try to do better in the second half. Did you feel like you did a much better job in the second half? Nah, I don't know. I thought we stunk in both halves. All right, Bronco football coach uh, Dirk Cutter. Putting it well, you know, as uh, the head coach could, and keep in mind, uh, a little emotional, you right. know, tough loss. Coach. We'll be back right after this.